Oh, hello, guys. Welcome back. I am Dom. I am Jamie. And this is the cutting room floor. And today, it's been a long awaited, anticipated day. And you guys are probably like, what? We weren't anticipating anything. Well, we were. We were. Okay. Because we did this episode two times for you guys. And the audio got screwed up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of crap. But now we think we got the solution down. So we are here to do. Part one. Part one. <laughs> of our Paul Thomas Of our Anderson. Paul Thomas Anderson series, because part two is already out. Yes. But yes. part one, Boogie Nights, 1997, PTA, Paul Thomas Anderson, the GOAT, um, one of the GOATs, you know, modern GOAT. Um, this is uh, my personal favorite film. It's uh, probably the film that got me into movies for real on a, on a deep level, and you know, Jamie, of course, he's seen this film because, you know, if you were around in the 90s you probably and you watched movies, you probably yeah. saw this. But, you know, I had him watch it again because it's been a while for him. And, and I and think, again. And again. And again. And again. <laughs> but I think he enjoyed it each time because it's that damn good. So yes. why don't you tell us your thoughts on the film? Well, the third time <laughs> I rewatched it, believe it or not, like, I, I was paying attention to the beginning of the film, how it sets everybody up. And there's so many layers as to what everyone is going through that works better if you rewatch the film. Oh, yeah. So, like, obviously, uh, I'm just thinking of now, like, when they introduce Amber uh, in, uh, in Jack's house and she's trying to call her kid. Mm-hmm. And then later on when, they, the, when some, some kid is trying to call for his mm-hmm. mom, you know, you can kind of see you're making these connections that later on make more sense and how everyone is uh the one thing that hit me this time was uh buck when he's selling the trying to sell the stereo Mm -hmm. and he starts playing the country music but he's talking (laughs) to the guy and i'm like oh he's acting like a stereo salesman because yes. he doesn't know what the yeah, hell he's talking about. He's an about. actor. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, because he's like, yeah, these quads or whatever. Yeah. He's like, kicks it up about 300 yeah. quads <laughs> yeah. per channel, but that's yeah. just technical talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and it didn't hit me before that like, oh, he's acting. He's an actor. Yeah, and I'm glad you caught that because there's yeah. a deleted scene where they're in the van driving. And it's Buck and Amber Waves up front, and the boys are in the back. And Buck's driving, and the radio starts acting screwy. And Amber's asking him about it, and he's like, fuck if I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes sense Yeah, now. it does. I'm like, I yeah. should have kept that in the film, though, which would have made it But better. he ends up like, that's his dream, is to mm-hmm. open up like an electronics place. But he doesn't know anything about he it. He doesn't. And I wonder if PTA left that scene out, because he's like, we got to give the illusion he kind of knows what yeah, the hell he's yeah, talking Yeah, because about. later on when he's talking to Jack about hooking up his stereo. Yeah, he's like, it's just not going to be loud. Yeah. And, you know, if it's not loud, he said, I don't I don't need loud. I need <laughs> I need peace. <laughs> and, and and the guy he's talking to in the beginning, he's like, this is high fidelity. The highest fidelity highest you can get. Highest fidelity <laughs> you can get, which means nothing yeah. to this guy. Yeah, he's like, what? Ah. What is fidelity? What is it? Yeah. Dude, he could have sold him if he would have put some Marvin Gaye on on that A-Track, yeah. bro. <laughs> but instead, he's dressed like Howdy Doody How- trying to <laughs> rock it out to, in the you know the country ah. music stuff. Dude, if that would have came out in the 70s, you know who would have played Buck? Ben Vereen. Oh, my God. You know what? Ben Vereen would have been great. He would have been great. He would have been, been incredible. Been great, yeah. Ben Vereen was actually you know, an incredible actor. First time I ever saw him, I was a kid. I used to watch Webster when that was on with Emmanuel Lewis and Never Dick Butkus. Dick, the the, the yeah, the NFL football, coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he uh, he was on. He played this guy. He and his wife. It might it might have been his wife in real life. I don't know, but they adopted you know Webster because it was sort of like different strokes, but with a different kid that has height issues. And uh, Ben Vereen, I think, played his uncle, and he came to see him. That was the first time I ever saw Ben Vereen. But then, you know, as you watch more things, you see what he was in. Dude, he was a great dancer. He was a great dancer and singer. It sounds like, dude, I rewatched all that jazz over the weekend. Yeah. He's so good in it, man. He's dancing, singing. He's incredible. That's the, once again, I know we talk about it every once in a while. That's the uh, Bob Fosse. Yes, he's incredible, bro. I 
I always thought Bob Fosse was gay. Me, bro, he is far from it. And and the thing is, because of that, I always thought it should have been called All That Jizz. <laughs> Instead. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, dude, because, like, I thought he was, before I started exploring his films, I thought yeah. he was gay, too, because he's yeah. a musical guy and all. Yeah. And then I'm like, wait a minute, no, nah, this dude had a bunch of chicks, Because he bro. directed that, didn't Yeah, he? and it's about his life, pretty yeah. much. And once you watch it, you're like, yeah, he wasn't gay yeah, at all. But- Remember, like, Doby Gillis, uh, the mm-hmm. first Doby Gillis, he was Charlie Trask, his roommate. He's even seen gay in that. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because he was a dancer. Dancer, bro. Yeah. Like, maybe it's just the environment and stuff. That, yeah, mm-hmm. it's not necessary. It's like, from a modern standpoint, he appears that way just because of how he had to move for what mm-hmm. he was doing. It's like, you know, and, and of course, he deals in a world where he's dealing with a bunch of, you know, homosexual people and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So. You know, spending a bunch of time with these people, you know, things rub off on you. So he may give uh, off that well, vibe. Things oh, probably did on, rub bro. off. Oh, I was like, but, I set myself you know what? up for that. I, I never thought of that of like Fred Astaire or Gene Kelly. No, no. Gene Kelly definitely. Gene Kelly is like He had a masculine. masculine. Yeah, I was like, he yeah. definitely had a masculine vibe to him for a, you know, performer. Yeah. You no, know, even like Ryan Gosling, like he's a performer, but he still yeah. gives off masculine energy. Like, and look, Hugh Jackman. Hugh he's Jackson, a big another dancer. Yeah. And then you watch Wolverine, you're like, mm, I yeah. don't know, fuck with that dude. No. <laughs> you know? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Ugh. Dude, I was, like I said, I was watching Huge Days Jack of Man. Fu- Dude, I was watching Days of Futures Past. I was like, oh, yeah. Bro, what the? hell did you eat who did you eat <laughs> uh he said before because he would always go on uh, talk shows he's like it's like steamed chicken and like broccoli mm-hmm. it's pretty much all he eats and he just works out and yeah that's what zach efron was doing for the iron claw he was like working out twice a day eating six times a day pretty much steamed broccoli rice and chicken yeah he's like but after a while my jaw he's like my jaw you know he broke his jaw he's like my jaw got too fucked up and I couldn't chew all that food, so I just had to start blending it. I was like, Bleh. I was like, blended chicken, rice, and fucking broccoli. So it's all like pureed, or, yeah, or yeah. drinking it like a drinking shake. it like a shake, yeah, oh like my God. shake out. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, that's rough. But yeah, anywho, yeah, sorry, boogie nights, boogie nights. So Actually, Ben Vereen would be a good choice. He would. Have. So yeah. it's safe to say you enjoyed the film. I did, and I think I enjoyed it even more. Like, every time I watch it, I enjoy it more because... Pick up on shit, man. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and you... well, Like, we have talked before, and we know we've talked before about it, but no one else does. But, like, how the music... And and I realized, like, the music that I loved before, it means more the more you watch it because Mm of what's going on with the characters internally in those scenes Mm -hmm. that I never really noticed. Like, I'm thinking about the Amber thing, like... When her kid calls and she's doing coke mm-hmm. and ignoring, you know, because no one's asking for Amber. They're, They're asking, asking for, for Maggie. Maggie. Is yeah. there a Maggie here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our man, Luis Guzman. Luis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A Soderberghian veteran. Yeah. Um, yeah, he. that's so funny. He said, some kid looking for his mom. I'm like, and, oh. and it's interesting because when when Jack in the beginning is talking to Eddie, because it's before he becomes mm-hmm. Dirk. Before Dirk. He's telling him that Amber is like the mother to everybody, mm-hmm. which we were talking about before anyway. You know, these different roles that these people have and take on. But like Jack explicitly says it. Mm-hmm. So he he tells us the audience right away that she's doing whatever she's doing to kind of fill that hole, that loss that she has. Yep. And she was. Filling the hole and loss for a bunch of other people, too. Yeah, she know? was. She was filling her holes. She was getting a, yeah. lot, a lot of <laughs> holes were filled in this film. Uh, PTA left no holes open. <laughs> and and Jack, even if they're t- together, when they get home, he's just like, stay sexy. And she goes to her own room. Mm-hmm. And it it is weird. And I know we're going to talk about it, but it's like how Jack... Even though he's in the middle of everything, he still distances himself from... Dude, he's like an outsider looking in almost. Yeah, yeah. But he's writing the script. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. He's like a peeping Tom mm-hmm. who's also the puppet master. Yes, who also <laughs> is leaving notes on what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take this off slowly. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. That, that's what he is. That's why, like, that's why I think Jack is essentially the... Obviously, Dirk's the main character, but Jack's the real heart and soul, I think, of the film. Him and Amber are the heart and soul. Yeah. As a as a couple, a pairing, a mom and dad, whatever you want to call yeah. them. Because like I said, they never really define their relationship. In in a way, it's almost like uh, uh, 
in, in a religious kind of way, it's almost like they're both sides of uh, what would make the God, because they were the creators mm-hmm. of their own world. Almost like an Adam and Eve type. Yeah, yeah. sort of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if we're getting biblical on them. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I, well the, I mean, there was, you know, people yeah. knew each other in the biblical way in the they, film. They did. So, <laughs> My so, Lord. So, so that could work. But yeah, yeah. they... Yeah, it's 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 interesting. The more I watch it, the more I see like how he sets up the scenes, how how detailed it is, and how how intimate like just a look from somebody can be. Yeah. Oh yeah. And like like intimate like you're you like you can know what's going on inside them. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean during the sex scenes. No, no. No, no. I mean like like the internal struggle that they're feeling, like because obviously Eddie has family issues mm-hmm. uh roller girl has family issues they never mm-hmm. really go into she it, definitely to it. she definitely has some kind of childhood trauma yeah going on and yeah. and it's like you can see that in certain scenes and you actually feel uh the uh the emotion to so, like like he humanizes uh pornographers yeah yeah because like pornographers a good example would just be like the scene speaking of roller girl when she's in class and yeah they're talking about you know the tests and everything they got to do and you could just see in her face she's like i'm not gonna be shit that was that was the that was the the look and thought everybody's getting ready to go to college and do all this and she's like i'm gonna be fucking on a camera like is that what i'm gonna be doing while everyone else is out following their dreams like Let's keep it real. How many people's dreams, besides maybe a young man, yeah. <laughs> is it to be in pornography? Yeah. You know, it's like, not... it could be cool, be a perk. Like, yeah. if I got paid to fuck, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm be upset about it. Yeah. No, not. Yeah. But if someone's like, Dom, if you could get paid to do one anything in life, it wouldn't be to fuck. No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, it wouldn't. You know? Yeah. Not that I don't love it. I love it just as much or probably even more than the next guy. But... <laughs> If you could pay me for something, it wouldn't be for that. Because yeah. I'll do that for free. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because once you're paid for it, it's a job. It's a job. It takes all the, I don't want to say fun, but I no, mean, it does, how many bro. people really have fun at their job? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know? look at it. Look at like, that's why like if you look at any any artist, their first album or two, movie or two, book or two, it's always incredible because they wrote it or did it with passion. Yeah, yeah. And then later on, it becomes a job. So they start getting formulaic and things uh, like that. So, you know, speaking of Heather Graham, because she plays Roller Girl, mm-hmm. I I love the first Austin Powers film. Mm-hmm. But then I didn't like the second one and I never saw the third one because, you know, the first one did poorly at the box office, but then it blew up on, on video. VHS, bro. Yeah. That thing blew up on video. But, but they made it, they being probably just Mike Myers and all his alter egos, mm-hmm. but they made it like with a passion for a specific genre mm-hmm. and in a specific way. And they did what they thought was funny. But then once it became popular, you could tell with the spy who shagged me mm-hmm. that they were like intentionally trying to make things funny. Oh, yeah, for especially the with the fat bastard. Character. Oh my God. Yeah. They, they wrote him up crazy. Yeah. Know? Uh, it was awful. absolutely, and but the first one is still classic. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, I think a better female companion. Although I'd rather look at Heather Graham, I think Elizabeth Hurley was a better female companion oh, to yeah. Austin, and she was British. Yeah, so yeah. It, so it yeah, made sense. So it made it, it. It just felt more authentic. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, she, and shit, Elizabeth Hurley was awesome back in the like late nineties. Like, look, she still is. If yeah, she still out. looks good. I yeah, mean, she yeah. looks great. But yeah, she was like, dude, you watch be dazzled. Oh, oh yeah, with Brendan Fraser. Yeah, she looked good in there. Did you ever see the original Be Dazzled? I just found out there was yeah, an original with, uh, like two Raquel weeks Welch. ago. Yeah. Dudley Moore, yo, Peter yo, Cook. So this is how I found out. I'm watching Family Feud from the 70s. Right? Oh, Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson kissing giving, all the chicks. Yeah, giving everyone STDs. Giving everybody fucking motto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Some of them kisses. He was, he yeah, helped, yo, there's this black uh, chick on there. He kissed her like three times. She was like, oh, man, you are so pretty. I was like, oh, let me find out you got the sweet tooth, Richard Dawson, like the chocolate girls. Yeah. But um, so I'm watching it, and they're like, name a, a woman who's known to have a nice figure. And I'm like, shit, let me put myself in the mindset of like 1975. Yeah, Raquel Welch. She was number two. And yeah. I, I didn't even think of her. And I was like, who the fuck is Raquel Welch? She was like, oh, oh my this. God. She was like, like BC, bedazzled. Right? Yeah. And I yeah. was like, bedazzled. Now I have to watch this. That was, is it terrible? 
I know it's not bad. Uh, I mean, Peter Cook and Dudley Moore in the '60s in England were like the biggest comedy duo. Like yeah. they were, they were the biggest thing, and they revolutionized comedy a few years before. They were part of a. I want to say like a sketch comedy thing called Beyond the Fringe. Mm. They were like two, two fourths of it. So I guess one half. Two fourths is one half. That's yeah. that's how math yeah. works. Yeah. Because it, it was just four guys. You know, like some went to Oxford, some went to uh, the the other Cambridge. Cambridge. And it's sort of like Monty Python, but before Monty Python. Wow. And they got together and they toured with a show like in England and then over here in the early '60s, and that's how they made a name for themselves. And then. Dudley Moore and Peter Cook just went off on their own. The other guys became like writers and did other things. Nice. But like they, and I only found out about a year or so ago because I was doing some research just for myself on like Monty Python mm-hmm. and uh, the Goon Show, which is where Peter Sellers started. Mm-hmm. And these guys were like in between like the Goon Show and, and Python. Nice. And, and they still, you know, had the same type of influence on everybody. Nice. Huh? So yeah, it's worthwhile because those guys are great together. And seeing Raquel Welsh in the '60s is mm-hmm. never a bad thing. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I look, I was like, okay, I, yeah. see, I see here, I see here. Yeah, my girl was up there though, Jane. Ah, really? She was up there. I was like, who was number one? Marilyn Monroe. Uh, yeah, but she wouldn't have even been around then. Yeah, but I mean, oh, but I guess if they're just saying who had a yeah, nice yeah, who figure. had a nice figure, you know. But that's when women look like women too. Yeah, like like they actually had she curves. curves. Like Marilyn yeah. had those nice natural. God, her body was. Crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was. Marilyn Monroe was something else, bro. Yeah. She was like, she's still one of the like most beautiful women of all time. Like, she was around fucking I mean, six years ago, you know, fucking almost. Or, oh my god, or, she died actually sixty two years. Yeah, ago. Yeah, so I was like yeah. sixty years ago. Because damn, because she was born in I think twenty six. So like that. and she died at sixty two. Mm-hmm. So she was only you know like thirty some when she died. So young, man. Yeah. Hey, she left a mark behind, though, dude. Gentlemen prefer blonde. Some like it hot, bro. Yeah. Banger is all about Eve. Didn't she? Was she in one with Clark Gable? One of his last films. I Maybe. Think. I believe. I'm sure she was. Anywho, we yeah, ain't talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't wow. like, uh, we came to hear about fucking Boogie Nights. Yeah, right? but then we started talking about this other You know, yeah. this is how it goes, guys. Um, So. So, so with, because Boogie Nights is your favorite film. Mm-hmm. So. How about you kind of lead because I meander. I got you. I got you. Well, Boogie Nights for me, uh, I saw it. I was very, very young. Um, I just turned six (laughs) when it came out. (laughs) And, you know, back in the day, my mom used to like to go to see a bunch of random movies. But, you know, she didn't always have someone to take. So she would take me. And we went and saw that late showing on a Sunday night. And, you know, I was mesmerized right away. I love the style you know the subject matter the music i was just dude, i was glued i was glued i was in a trance and you know later when it came out on vhs we got it watched it a gajillion times and <laughs> got on vhs yep vhs and then, yep and then you know went through the went through the decades got it on dvd you know now i got it on blu-ray so yeah, you know yeah. i've had it on i pretty much every format um they make a 4k i'll I get that laser disc laser disc <laughs> might as well get that Flip it over. Shit. yeah um so it's a movie that stuck with me all throughout my life um and i don't know like i, I liked it when i was a kid and then like later in you know my late teens it just kind of resurfaced back in my life and I started really, really getting deeper into films and it was one I would always revisit because I was, when I was about 16, 17, you know, I started watching like Taxi Driver and The mm. Godfather and, you know, all those legendary classic films. And, but I would always come back to Boogie Nights and always refer back to it, especially like watching Goodfellas. Um, when I was like 17, I was like, PTA was watching this when he, when he made Boogie Nights and, you know, seeing other films that influenced Boogie Nights and then seeing films later that Boogie Nights influenced itself. Um, because, you know, people have tried to replicate the kind of good fellas, Pulp Fiction, Boogie Nights style from the 90s countless yeah. times. And it just only three guys have really gotten it right. And that's PTA, Scorsese and Tarantino. Are those the three best films of the '90s? Now that you mention it, I'm thinking yeah, they're 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 like, top ten for sure. Obviously, it would go like in order, like Goodfellas, Pulp Fiction, and then Boogie, and Nights. Boogie Nights, and then because what films could really beat them in the '90s? Shawshank Redemption, 
That is very good. Frank um, Darabont. Yeah, yeah, Frank Darabont. Shawshank Redemption could, could rival that in the 90s. We could jump in 1999 and pull a bunch out of Fight Club. The we Matrix. can. We um, can. You're right. But American Beauty. American Beauty. I mean, election. Sam Mendes, that's his first film. Yep. Election. Yeah. That's 99. I mean, we could, we could pull out a lot from 99. I mean... But see, those are all after those. Those three. are all after those three, yeah. So, so, so there might be some kind of like influence. Ninety four was just an incredible year for film. Um, when did the English Patient come out? Ninety six. I think that's ninety five or six. One yeah, of them. Because that's another. Um, good that's one. a good one too. Yeah, that's a Anthony good Anthony Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a classic. Because yeah. uh, yeah, that's that's I think that's six. Yeah, I would I would go ahead. It's definitely definitely without doubt those three. Would be in the top probably five yeah. of the nineties. I would probably throw Shawshank in there. Maybe Silence of the Lambs. Oh, no. um, was that ninety one? Ninety or ninety one? Ninety or ninety one? Ninety one. Ninety one. Was 91. that Ted or Jonathan Demi? I always forget because they're brothers. That's Jonathan. Okay. Um, yeah, that's ninety one. One of my favorite Jodie Foster performances. Um, but you just said you watched Taxi Driver. I did, and I love <laughs> so, her in there. Yeah, and. I believe she's a Libra and they're like us because they discuss Zodiac signs. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Either she's a Libra or somebody she was friends with was a Libra. She discusses that. But yeah, I mean, that's one of the best child performances of all time. Easy. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. Well, Paper Moon. Paper Moon. Another yeah. good one. With Tatum. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a there's some good child performances back in the day. Yeah. Um, What's that name? Uh. Linda, Linda, Linda Blair, Linda Blair from yeah. The Exorcist. Oh yeah, you yeah, know, she girl. was. I think she's fourteen. Yeah, something like that. So, a lot of people like talk about Anna Paquin in the piano, and I'm like, she was good, but she barely fucking says anything. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, so, but yeah, so but she I was mean, good in in the piano. It's all about Harvey Keitel's junk. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's really what it's about. <laughs> that's what <laughs> oh, man, Harvey. Uh, Speaking of taxi, taxi driver, driver yep. yeah, yeah. And I was shocked he wasn't in Goodfellas. Like he you know what, he right. just felt like he should have been in Goodfellas. Yeah. How is he not one of the goons, like one of the dudes with a funny name? Yeah. He could have right. easily been Freddie No Nos or something. Or, or, or Jimmy Two Jimmy Times. Jimmy Two Times, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go get the papers. Get the papers. <laughs> <laughs> Goodfellas coming soon, guys. Yes, That's yes. Going. So, yeah, so Boogie Nights for me, it, it's a special film. Um, I love how layered it is. I love the giant ensemble cast with all these people and stories connecting that. PTA did it so seamlessly. I honestly think he did it better than QT did. Although Pulp Fiction oh, may yeah. be considered a better film. I think he did a better job of connecting the characters than PTA did. And, and you I mean, get more you emotionally get, involved. You do. Yeah. yeah you care about, yeah, yeah. you care about the little characters a lot. Like yeah. Buck. I give a shit about Buck. I give a shit know? about little Bill. Yeah. I give a shit. Yo, I really, man, little Bill. You're like, God, she's got damn, an ass in her right? cock. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm it's so, got an answer to cock. I'm so glad PTA decided, like, no, let's roll with that because naturally when people are pissed off, they fuck words up. Yes. So yes. let's let's roll with that. Let's not fix it. I like that. Yeah. Um you feel for, for a bunch of these characters, like you really start feeling for, for Amber when you see her like starting to struggle with not being the mother she wanted to be and yeah. kind of facing the consequences of the choices she's had. But I mean, I, I think, but like, I think the best way to go through this film is to break down the characters because yes, it yes. kind of just builds it up. So, should we start with this with the son, Jack? We should, yes, yes. The S U N, the S U N, not yeah. S O N, because yeah. he definitely is everyone's D A D. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. No, so Jack Horner, played by the late legendary Burt Reynolds, uh, probably gave his best performance in this film. I was just going to say the same thing. You beat me to it. Yeah, I'm like, it, it, it's got to be. And he's kind of subdued, too. Like, mm-hmm. he, because I was paying more attention to, like, how he speaks and how he moves. Space says it all, man. Everything. And he, he he emotes well in that movie. He does. And and he kind of reminds me of, uh, believe it or not, our buddy Chandler. My, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, he that, does got a Chandler yeah. vibe to him. But it's like the Jack Horner, Burt Reynolds. Yes, yes. I'm like, wait a second, because I was watching, I'm like, holy crap. Just the way he carries himself. Yeah. Doesn't get loud, keeps it low. And yes. Smooth, and, you he, know? and he knows everything. And he helps I was, I was everybody. like, knowledgeable as hell. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And he's, and he's just kind of like, he's there to help people and to guide them in the right direction. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a voice of reason almost. Yes, and yeah. The, the Jack is such a lovable and likable character because he is the dad. You, if you didn't grow up with a father figure, 
this is a guy you'd be like, this is what a dad should be. Someone yeah. who helps you, guides you, is your friend, listens to you. Does Jack listen to them? Yeah. When they gave him ideas, he didn't brush them aside. He yeah. used them. Yeah, because he loved, like, when when he, when he Eddie told him the name. Yeah. These are great or, or, names. Or, 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 yeah, 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 in the van. With Chess the, Rockwell yeah. and Brock Landers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and his reaction yes, seems genuine. Like thing. it almost seems like it's the first time he heard it. Yep. And and that like you can't. I, it's almost like you can't fake that kind of reaction. You can't. It's almost you know? like it's almost like you would think it is the first time you heard. Like like they yeah. changed it on him. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like they changed the script and didn't tell him. Yeah. And I gotta I gotta credit PTA for that because. They famously didn't get along. Bert was ready to beat the shit out of PTA, which PTA's <laughs> young ass would have got killed by that man. Well, he was um, young, like 25, 26. 26. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. That's, and, and to make a movie like this at 26, my lord. That's just, you knew we had someone special on our hands with that. But PTA brought more out of Burt Reynolds in a select few scenes than any director ever has. Yeah, like, yeah. And like, like we talked about before, PTA said... You're not Burt Reynolds. You're Jack Horner. You're playing a character yeah. in this film. You're not, this ain't sexy, smooth, you know, this ain't the Burt show. Yeah, get you know? that gum out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. That Burt Reynolds Put this ascot on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, he rocked he that rocked ascot. It. rocked he, it. The only other guy would be Freddie from Freddy Scooby-Doo. Freddie from Scooby-Doo, or man. Mr. Furley from the uh, Three's Company. Don Knotts. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Don Knotts <laughs> rocked the shit out of that thing. Yes, yes. I love him in Three's Company. I yes. was just watching that the other day. I love Three's yeah. Company. Yeah, they're, they're the Rest only other people. Johnny Ritt, man. Oh, yeah. Um, he, yeah. Was, he was funny, too. Um, he was like the poor man's Chevy Chase. John Ritter. Uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, yeah. He's a poor man's Chevy now, Chase. Now that you mentioned <laughs> like the physicality that he mm-hmm. did, because that would have been after... Chevy was on SNL doing yep, it. You're yep. right. It was like the four man Chevy Chase, I'm yeah. telling you. Like Problem Child, one of the funniest films ever. I don't care if it's panned universally. I still love it. It's funny. But uh yeah, Jack Horner Jack Horner plays this fatherly figure to everyone, but he doesn't expect anything from anyone. You know? Yeah. Yes, they come to work and everything, and that's what he wants them to do, but it's like once you're in the family, you're in the family. Yeah, be- like because there's a point where a lot of those actors weren't acting. No, like not Buck at all. wasn't acting for a minute. No, and like, they're still he, and it's still coming over every yeah. day. You need help, no problem. Yeah, he, yeah. He's like, once you're in my circle, you're in my circle. You're my friend. You're my my family. I'm not using you. We help each other when we need. Yeah, because I I think it's because the relationships are and or were symbiotic so like jack you know he got something from them so he's giving back Mm -hmm. it's not it's not just like take 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 yeah he understood that yeah and so even you're right even after they stopped working and he stopped uh profiting from them he would still give back to them Mm -hmm. because they gave of themselves to help him to begin with like look at eddie bro or dirk dirk he comes back Jack don't ask no damn questions. He opens the door and lets them right in. And they, dude, they just they just hug it out. Hug it out. Like two yeah. and that's how men do. You know, yeah. men, we don't you know, I'm not gonna get into gender roles here, but when men get into it, at least from my experience, we're gonna fist fight. And tickle if that happens yeah. <laughs> or hug it out. Yeah, but fist if, fight, if we fist fight, fight or after the fist fight, <laughs> we're done, our beef is over, we're square. Yeah, yeah. Either we're gonna say, fuck it, I fucked up, you fucked up, hug it out and move on. We ain't gonna hold no grudges for 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah, you know, I remember back in the day when Jamie fucking took five dollars <laughs> from me. You know, they're like, come on, yeah. man, nobody care about that shit. So yeah, I, Jack is a very understanding, you know, generous loving caring guy and i don't know if it's from working with so many different people and taking on all these personalities and kind of becoming the grandfather godfather type yeah you know he my god he is like the marlon he's brando. like marlon brand he no, is he really is he is like brando in the godfather he really is like everybody exactly, comes to him everybody and, come, and he's and he go he does a dirty business but he doesn't do it in a dirty way. Yes. Like, yes. you know, Vito was very much like, of course he killed and did crimes, but yeah. when he got older, like when you watch The Godfather 2, 
you see young Vito is more like Michael, but as he gets older, just like Jack, you soften up over time. Parents soften up. Like my mom is not the same person she was 10 years ago. Yeah. She's much more emotional and, and open and willing to love and help and give. And, you know, she'll, she'll give you the last $2 in her pocket, you know, but well, ask her 15 years ago, it might've not been that way. Well, also like, parents after a while you kind of become peers because like your kids become mm, I'm friends a- adults yeah. and you you actually share experiences yeah and... we're going out drinking now yeah you know? yeah, yeah. yeah like we we went and did this or that and so i so look at them like a kid yeah so there's still that dynamic of parent and child but at the same time like as as you grow up you understand more what your parents went Absolutely. through. Absolutely. So, is, yeah, your relationship does should evolve. It should and evolve. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And I'm and I'm guessing like Jack, over the years dealing with so many of these kids and essentially raising them a lot. Yeah. Of them, yeah. You know, he's warmed up to this and he's become extremely patient and because he's so patient with all these fucking cokeheads yeah. everywhere. Look, he had to be what their parents weren't. Yeah. Yeah, and my like, parents really? didn't give a shit. Yeah. You know, he had to give a shit, which theirs didn't. I think you know? she OD'd. Oh, really, doctor? Yeah, oh, really, doctor? Yeah. <laughs> think you might want to get think some you might get shit. some better shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the second time in two weeks, and chickens <laughs> OD'd on me. <laughs> he said, "I think she's sick." I'm like, I'm like motherfucker, she's foaming out the mouth. Yeah, and she out. sees it. Like, oh, what laugh. the hell? Yeah. He's like, "Oh, dude, she's freaking out." When the dude slaps yeah. him, he says, "Hey." Hey, get it together. I'll be like, right, I'll slap him too. I'm like, bro, what the fuck, man? And, and what does Jack say? Out the back door. Out the back door. Out yep, the back, out the back he, door. He's calm as a he's cucumber. He's calm as a cucumber. No yeah. one saw it. No. Nobody saw it. It yeah, went smooth. Out the back door. Didn't, yo, and, and Drop it's her like, off and, at the hospital. And you know he's dealt with this. Yeah. Plenty of times. Yeah. Like, he wasn't phased because this wasn't new to him. Yes. He's like, yes. I've, been, I've been down this road before, <laughs> buddy. Yeah. yeah, this ain't shit new to your boy. So, <laughs> yeah. So, Jack, he's, Jack is one of those guys, like one of those older guys you meet. They've seen it all. They've done it all. Nothing you can tell them is going to. That's the guy you go to for advice because he's been through it. Yeah. Or he knows someone who's been through it, seen it firsthand. And Jack is just, he is the son because everyone gravitates and orbits around him. Yeah. If he's the sun, then Amber's Earth. Yeah. You know. Or would she be the moon? Maybe the moon. Because, you know, they, they're both kind of in the sky and everybody looks up to them. That That's is the only true. reason I would say that. I was just thinking she's the Earth because. She's mother motherly. Earth. Mother yeah, Earth. she's yeah. motherly. So that's why I was thinking she's the Earth. Fine. The nurturing. Touche. Yeah, yeah that, that, was where, <laughs> that was just where my head went. No, you're you know right. You're I mean? right. But, um, yeah, because, I mean, Jack, as a character, I think he is actually one of PTA's best written characters. And PTA is phenomenal with characters. It's one of his, oh, yeah. I think it's his best trade as a writer is. now that i've seen more of his stuff oh yes, yeah look yeah. look at daniel plainview and look oh at look God. at the two characters in the master yeah right? he can write the fuck out of some characters bro yeah and jack even though you know very early one i think it's one of his best ones and he felt so real everyone's known a guy like jack in their life and you can tell jack is someone he pieced together from experiences with real people so I, I love Jack as a character. I think he's one of the best. He He's probably my second favorite character if we really get into it. Um as far as characters I like based on personality. Uh but like in general or just in this film? In this film, in this oh, okay. film. Oh, okay. I mean his I mean, best character is fucking Daniel playing oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know if you get I mean Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis I mean, just I don't even know like I don't know if we could even and he's got so many good ones, but none of them yeah. are touching him, bro. Just with, and I'm like, did he even have to direct Daniel Day, or did he just say, um, "Do your thing"? I don't know. That's a good question because how do you direct? He was already like a top, like the top guy. Yeah, like, yeah. How, what? How does a guy who's like 35 years old tell Daniel Day Lewis what to do? Yeah, that's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> Because it seems like Daniel Day Lewis would choose to work with you, yes, not the other way around. Yes, yes, because you know PTA is like, bro, if I can get Daniel Day, I can, I'm taking him. Yeah, yeah. And Daniel Day is like, I'll I'll, I'll think about it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll check out some of your work. But I guess Daniel Day was a huge fan of Punch Drunk Love. That's so a great fan. He, yep, he made Adam Sandler. Yep, and I, and yeah. 
Daniel Day and Adam Sandler are really good friends. Really? Yeah. So I guess he called up Adam to talk about PTA. He was like, yeah, bro, work with him. He's wow. fucking incredible. Like when Adam Sandler did Uncut Gems, he said Daniel Day-Lewis was the first person to call him and tell him how great the role was. Really? Right? Crazy. Wow. He was like, bro, you was crazy. He was like, hey, <laughs> I'm like, man, imagine... That's your phone ringing. It's like Daniel Day Lewis. So like I'm like, damn. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But yeah, Jack is is an incredible character. That you know he the film needs him probably more than any other character because without, without Jack, none of this goes. Yeah, that's Jack true. makes it go. He brings the money in. He finds the talent. Him and Amber. Yeah. Um, he yes. finds the talent. But I mean, but he found Dirk on his own. He he, did. he found Dirk because you you had brought up something before. About how, you know, in that nightclub, he's always looking around. Yep, he's... So, so he was like eyeballing Eddie for a while mm -hmm. before he goes. I thought like he was scouting him for at least a few yeah. weeks, probably. And you could tell because I watched it with that in mind. You could tell, I think, by the way that Jack like looks at him, that like he knows exactly what he's heard, mm -hmm. and he's gonna go check it out because if it's true he's you know he's a make a move yeah 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 because jack jack is like a college scout bro like yeah he knows where to look go saw your games watch you perform a little bit yeah. and see if you can make it in the league it's sort of like uh in the full monty when that one dude comes in there like He's our lunchbox. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because I just watched yes, that. Yes, yeah, that's so, what I was just yeah, thinking. Was, <laughs> <laughs> that dude yeah. was the only dude who could have actually passed as a stripper. Yes, None yes. None of them other dudes. Oh, ain't no woman paying you to take off your clothes. No, not Maybe at all. Maybe in your little town because people are like, oh, it's funny to see some yeah. dudes we know. No, fuck, man, they no. would do terrible, bro. I'm like, Look, isn't Tom Wilkinson in that? Yes. And oh my god, yeah, it's it's a funny film. Though. It is. It's I'm a like, great it movie. Is funny. Yeah, it's I'm like, great. God, I'm like, all it does is reinforce that British people aren't the best to look at, that <laughs> <laughs> bro. I'm looking at the chicks in that film, and I was like, oh my god, is this what you got to choose from? It's this been area? a while since I've seen it, dude. Watch it. You're gonna be like, man, I saw it like in the '90s. You're gonna be like. Out. You're like, wow, this is the ugliest cast of females <laughs> I've ever seen in a film. So bro. I'll start playing the Baja Man. Yeah. Who <laughs> let the dog go? <laughs> That's a classic. Oh, I was in third grade when that song came out. It was wow. huge, man. It was huge. Wow. Yeah, anywho. But you can't say that about Boogie Nights. No, no, no. Um, I was not in third grade. I think I was in Oh, first. oh no, I just meant who let the dog go. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> There's... Amber Waves, Becky Barnett, yeah. Roller Girl, all baddies, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, shoot. Yeah. Becky Barnett, dude, I didn't realize how hot she was. Yeah. I was looking at her like, I was just, because I was looking at the characters. I was like, she still looks really good. She looks incredible. I was like, hmm. I was like. Because I think um, she was in Harlem Nights. Yes. She yes. was the angel mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. And that's, you know, before Boogie Nights. Yeah, A, yeah. a good while before. So I'm nice is what, 89, 88? I'm thinking around there. Yeah, yeah like, it's when it's when Eddie Murphy started directing. Doing too. his own stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's gotta be like at the early at the earliest eighty seven. That's like, that's my regret for Boogie Nights. Yeah. So little Becky Barnett. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, he should have left that deleted scene in with her, the one I told you about where the husband beats her up and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. That he should have left that in. It was a good scene. It would have contextualized what happened to the Corvette, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, because I'm yes, like, what happened that's what to? happens to the vet. Yeah. And you're like, damn, well, what the hell y'all do to the vet? And and I'm, I'm sure he was like, damn, bro, we're already clocking in about two, two and a half. So yeah. he's like, what can we cut? I don't give a fuck. Boogie Nights could have been three hours. I would have been happy. Because look, a lot of people, they care when you help a disabled vet. They do. They and do. that's what... Dirk had then. He had a disabled vet. Yep. yep. He <laughs> had a disabled had. vet. And I mean, come on, 10 coats of competition orange. You got to help that thing out, bro. <laughs> yeah. Right, Todd? <laughs> Whose vet is that in the driveway? <laughs> Dirk's. <laughs> Yo, it's so great. But Oh, I'm sorry. Amber. Amber, Amber. bro. Amber Wave. So she's definitely the next most important. Mother Earth. Uh, tell us what you thought about Amber, because you already know how I feel about Julianne Moore as an actress. Yes, and Amber Wave I do. Yeah. The character, it's interesting how your boy, PTA, mm -hmm. approaches pornography and the scenes that they're acting in 
in a way that's like a job. Yes. Like she's trying to talk Dirk through it the first time. Yep. And it's okay. Do whatever. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Aiming at my tits if you can. Yeah, like yeah. That, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then when they're like cut, you know, they just stop. They start bullshitting about yeah. whatever. Yeah. Oh, I can go again if you want yeah. me to. Jack, do you want me to use a Spanish accent? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's it's weird because you, she's probably the first one to show you that it is work. It's work. It it is. It's not. Even though it's like the most intimate thing you can do with someone, it's not an intimate thing. It's not. They remove themselves, especially. I feel like. Once you've been in the industry a long, long time. Yeah. I feel like, you know, they really approach it. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm glad to do a scene. They treat it like actors. Yeah. Like if Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett were going to do a movie. Yeah, treat yeah. Treat it just like that. Talk about the scene real quick. What, what you want to do, yes, I want to do. Yeah. Talk with the director. You know, yeah. treat it just like that. Jack, what do you want from us? Yeah. You want me like this? Yeah. You know, make sure you pound her hard when you're like this. And yeah. Slow it up here. You know, when you do this, but you know, that's a job. It's direction. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's like, bro, it's it's yeah. literally like if Quentin Tarantino's directing Leo and Brad, you know? Yes, like, yes. It's just a slightly more intimate scene. It's unsimulated, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, we've seen real sex in real and regular films. Lars von Trier does it because he's a freak, you know? And, but, the, and there's a, a movie with uh, Donald Sutherland and your girl, Julie Christie. Oh, And okay. apparently they. It's uh, I guess an urban legend at this point, but apparently during that scene they really, dude, Donald Sutherland got to fuck Julie Christie. It's yeah, that's crazy. apparently yeah. <laughs> Look, Julie Christie in like the sixties and seventies, hot bro, and Donald Sutherland is not. No, <laughs> that's my man. Yeah, Hawkeye. I love I love Donald Sutherland. My man Hawkeye bro, Pierce, bro, I, Donald and Kiefer, bro. I love both of them. Even though yeah. Kiefer always plays the heavy, yeah. he's always good in it. You know, but look. Donald, he was even the pot smoking <laughs> professor in Animal House. In Animal House, yep. yeah, yeah. And so. dude, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh my god, that's right, dude. Like so random. Yeah, like, you're what right. A, but his best role is probably Mash. Yeah. Or um, what's that horror movie he did in the seventies? Invasion uh, of the Body Snatchers. That, yeah, that, yeah. and um, he, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He's, shit, he's in a lot of good films. But his hair was it. terrible in the late seventies. Yeah, I mean. Honestly, yeah, his like hair looks better up. now. I'm yeah, like, how yeah. does your hair look better now? You're like 82. <laughs> like, yeah, it, I mean, he looked great as Hawkeye. But yeah. He was always wearing the, the he had other the hat. little hat. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he was he was funny as shit, Mash. Like, yeah, I like the direction his career took because based on Mash, if that's the first thing you saw him in, you probably thought he would have took a comedy route. Like, yeah, because he was in uh, I think the Dirty Dozen first mm -hmm. before that. And something else. I think they were like World War II films. Mm -hmm. And then Mash is, was his first real starring role. Yeah. Because he was just a co-star before that. And he, he was funny as shit. That was funny as shit. Yeah. And they dropped the, the little tent. The little oh, yeah. The tent. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hot Lips. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm resigning my commission. Well, God damn it. Hot Lips, resign your goddamn commission. I might throw that on tonight while I'm yeah. working. Yeah. Oh, my Because I got that on Blu-ray. I had to get it. I, I like when the dog comes up and... and Hawkeye's like, hey, pup, pup. Oh, but God, like the dog's bro. name, pup, 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 pup. I know. I'm, the, but it, it shows you like the lack of creativity. But, <laughs> but you know, it's like we don't even have time to name this dog. Yeah, we hey. do. Well, and, you and see Ho what John. they're doing, bro. Like, God yeah. damn, those procedures. I was like, uh, bro, I'm so glad I wasn't in the military back in the day. Like, I'm watching Born on the Fourth of July yesterday with Tom Cruise. Oh yeah, yeah, bro. Any dude that wanted to go to Vietnam willingly, <laughs> you're a fucking freak. Yeah, because. Oh man, oh bro, Vietnam looks like the absolute worst time ever. Not everyone had bone spurs. No, so, I wish I would. Man, so Donald got lucky with that. I'll be like, I, I, I don't think he got lucky. I don't think he has bone spurs. I would have told him I was gay. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, and it, yeah, and I'm you know here what? to sign up. <laughs> At that point, they might have been like, well, don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, yeah, you're for in. real. I'm like, you're well, in I too told. Good a shape like, for us to say. I no. told. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like yeah. everybody knows yeah it's vietnam because <laughs> i uh you know i i know some vets and they have some horrific stories dude man. i've heard some man i watched a yeah. documentary on it and i was like bro the fact that this dude can like continue with his life after some of the shit he's done and seen is crazy i'm like my yeah. lord and it's weird i no, it's, that's a discussion for another yeah, time i'm yeah, sorry but, but yeah. no but anyways but amber Amber, like we were saying, Amber does 
She approaches. She's very professional. Everyone's very professional in this yes, movie. Yes, yes, that's on, it. On set and going about work and getting shit done, they're all professional. They all yeah. work. Offset, they might get a little wild with the drugs and stuff, but everyone yeah. was really professional. Everyone was family and friends. No one, there was no beef between any two characters. Like, no, no two characters were like, oh, I hate you. Even, like, if they did have a problem, it was something they worked out quickly. And and when they did, if, like, characters did, it was usually some outside force. It wasn't them. Yeah, it like wasn't. drugs or Yeah, something. drugs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't actually, like, their interpersonal relationship. It was something that changed them to make them act a certain way. And that's where the, the tension came from. Yeah. Because Amber Waves is, like we said, she's a mother figure. And essentially, she's filling a void with all these children in her life. Yes. With Dirk and um, Roller Girl and, you know, all the other I'm little I'm sure, kids. like, Reed and Buck. Yeah, too, Reed, too. And, yeah, and Reed and Buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them. All of them, yeah. And, and, and that woman that does the paintings. Oh, Buck's Buck's wife. I don't yeah. know why I always forget her name. I do too. Um, and she's super cute in that movie, but she does yeah. not look good in fucking Magnolia, bro. He really toned her down in that one. Yeah, the, the artist. Yeah, just call her the artist. The artist with the great paintings that all look the same. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Everyone's a child to her. Um, Amber waves. Everyone is. Yeah. And Amber, although she might be the most flawed character in the story, drug addict, uh, alcoholic. You know, sex addict, deadbeat um, mom. Dead mom. <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't want to be that way. No, no, and she doesn't know how to turn her life. She around. doesn't know how, and, and you can see that in her face in certain scenes. Like she doesn't know how to get out of this because this is her life. It's her life, and this is what all she's known. Yeah. And and you got to think about the time period we're portraying too. It's the seventies. We didn't have the help and resources and knowledge about the drugs and things like that that we have now. Cocaine was still pretty new. pretty new in the seventies. Like yeah, it was yeah. very fashionable common thing yeah. so it's like bro you had doctors and lawyers doing coke like it was recreational it's not looked at it wasn't looked at like we're looking at it now yeah you know when we look at like oh you're a cokehead now like oh you're a fucking drug addict but it probably back started then, it was doctors. it was a very yeah because i think some used it in uh during surgery well, i'm sure they like did. an anesthetic i mm-hmm. mean you're like, yeah, I'm great doc yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so amber you know her drug use you know, we see it spiral out of control through throughout the film. And, you know, you get the great scene with her and Roller Girl just jabbering. You oh, know, like after two Dirk leaves. Yes. Yes. And yes. Talking about all the things they want to do, going to do, should do. And they're all sweaty and washed out. And, you know, it's it's insane. But, you know, but you see this woman when she's introduced, you just see this beautiful gorgeous redhead se- like cocaine never looks so sexy like <laughs> so she's walking cocaine. she's walking cocaine bro yeah, she's like yeah. bro being with her was probably like doing a line bro like yeah for real like dude if i'm dirk if you're like yo i'm sorry like as fine as heather graham is if i got if i had to pick one if i'm fucking amber or roller girl if i only got one pick one night i'm taking amber away yeah, you know? yeah that's just me i'm sure other people would disagree with me but Julianne Moore was special back then. She was she was in some really good roles around that time. And after Boogie Nights, that's when she really kind of took yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think she kind of owes, she got an Oscar nomination, her and Burt Reynolds. And I think she kind of owes PTA a big portion of her career. And, you know, he used her a few times. Yeah. Um, you know, so they stayed in touch. But Amber's character is so beautifully written because – as as you want to hate her but you can't yeah you can't hate her you feel bad for her you empathize with her even when you shouldn't yeah and you just love her because she is it's like if your own mother was doing something fucked yeah, up because all these characters are flawed and you can relate to their flaws mm-hmm. only one who really doesn't have like crazy apparent flaws is jack you yeah. know jack is pretty normal i mean you yeah. could say he has a uh, uh, dependency issues, maybe. Yeah, because he needs he needs those people, people around. around. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that might be like his biggest flaw as a person. But if that's your biggest flaw as a person, you're doing okay. Yeah, because <laughs> you're right. He doesn't drink. You don't drink. He, he don't do, do coke. The drugs. You don't, he... I mean, he's all about the paper and the business. Yeah, he don't do nothing illegal. Well, kind of, but he not. just kind of makes sure, I guess, that everyone doesn't. Uh, I want to say go off the deep end. But... Yeah. 
That seems to be like what he does. It's what he does. He's yeah. got to keep because, you know, he he had he doing a good job, but he kept Amber in check all this time. He kept Roller Girl in check all all these guys under his umbrella. We're pretty good. Dirk being introduced in their life. Not that he himself fucked people's lives up, but he kind of stirred the pot a little bit. Yeah, yeah. His presence alone, you know, and them not having someone like, ever having someone like him around. He's this, oh, this young, beautiful, yeah. you know, just new thing. And he just makes everyone act a little different. Look how yeah. Amber reacted to him. She was looking at him like how I look at, you know, her. Jessica Chastain <laughs> or her, yes. Yeah, yeah. And dude, she's doing that coke and she's looking at him like oh, bro, she was like a dog with a T bone in front of him, you know? Well think about it though, like what she's used to is like that guy that's freaking out about the girl Odin. Yeah. That's what she's used to. And then she sees this kid who's just like you know, he's showing his dong to uh the colonel. Yeah, right in front of everybody. Like, well thank you. Man. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Jack says you got a big cock. Yep. You got <laughs> nice, a big big cock. nice cock. May right. I see it right now? Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> so casual. Yeah, so yeah. So casual. Like, it was but, nothing. But that's the business. That's the business. It's not, like, it's weird because it's not sexual. And even the film isn't, like, a sexual movie. No. It's really not. That's and, what and you that's would think thing. a film with so much sex and sexuality to it would turn you on yeah i get far more turned on watching cronenberg films yeah it's it's almost like orgasmo did you ever see yeah, orgasmo yes. <laughs> yeah and i love that movie gun that makes yeah. people come that shit's funny and as hell stunt stunt cock and it's yeah. a black dude <laughs> 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 Fucking trey parker uh, and mad stone were incredible. fucking incredible, incredible man incredible. they're great but yeah it's yeah. it's really it's a film that isn't it's just like i was talking about belladonna of sadness like it's sexual but it's not it doesn't turn me on. There's it's other not like films. Pornographic. Yes, there's other yeah, things I've yeah. watched that would get a rise out of me before yeah. that would. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, yeah, and, and you would think, and a lot of people used to think when I was younger, oh, you like this movie because you can see all this nudity. I'm like, oh, there's it's not really, really not that much, much in it. Yeah, yeah it's like, not about nudity. Yeah, it's though. really it's not, not about, about nudity or sex. Like, sex, that's just their occupation. It's really yeah. about the struggles in finding yourself and you know, becoming the best version of yourself that you can, despite the things that have happened. Yeah. In your it's life. picking yourself up out of those situations yep. uh, or uh, how to, or mm -hmm. how you got there and how you are showing you like, bro, even when you're at your at rock bottom, you can still go back up. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Look at Dirk lost it all. He had it all lost it all. He did. Yeah. And got right back to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, shit. Well, he said in the beginning to his girlfriend that his mom hated, you know, I'm going to be a star. Yep. Big, bright, shining Big, star. Big, bright, shining, beautiful star. Yeah. And, and he gives the same speech at the end. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Where the fuck is Ringo? <laughs> Yo, he said, <laughs> that shit, he's dressed like Miami Vice. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> 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 fucking great, bro. I'm sure Mark Wahlberg had a blast doing that fucking movie. He had to have because you, you have to be a good actor to act that badly. Yes. He was incredible in that role. I'm like I know he wanted Leo, and Leo, or he says the only regret of his career is not doing Boogie Nights. God, he would have been great. He would have been really good. Yeah. But I don't know if he would have brought that naivety that Mark Wahlberg brought to it. Yeah. Leo's such a, at least that version of Leonardo, older Leo would play it a lot better because now Leo's at a point where he can be the butt of the joke and play it up really well, like yeah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or even Killers of the Flower Moon. Whereas Leo back then was a very assured actor. Where yeah. I think Mark Wahlberg, as an actor, was still trying to find himself. So I think yeah. it was a great role for him to play at that time. Because Wahlberg had probably only done... Uh, Fear. Thank you. I couldn't yep. remember the name. I'm like, Reese like, Witherspoon. Fear is like, I think that was his... Fear and Basketball Diaries. Yeah, That yeah. was pretty much all he had. And yeah. that's where he... That's he where PTA... Uh, yeah. And PTA wanted to cast Leo. He was because like, of if, Basketball Diaries. Yes. He okay. was like, if I can't get him, give me Mark. Yeah. So Mark was... He was like... And Leo was like, yo, I'm doing this fucking dumbass James Cameron movie that's going to make like two and a half billion dollars. Can't, bro. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Leo was so yeah. mad about that. He was like, really? He, yes. He was like, God, I wish I would have done Boogie Nights. <clears throat> Too bad he couldn't have done them both, though. I mean. I know. You know, you ain't no way you're working on another movie while you're doing a James Cameron movie. It's just yeah. not happening. Yeah, because look, Sam Worthington, is that his name? Mm -hmm. Like. 
He's been MIA, probably just filming. Literally, all he's like, bro, I have to be re- available when fucking James calls me. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Literally, like, because he he got in like Clash of the Titans and yes. Wrath of the Titans, and he did that movie, um, The Debt. That was pretty good, actually. Um, he did a couple little films. Man on a Ledge, I think, was one of them. Was he in that? Yeah, I think that was him. Okay, I thought that was Joseph Gordon Levitt. No, that that was a different one. That was about a guy walking. across. Yes, walking across. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man on a yeah. Ledge. So. He got his little, he got, you know, he got, but he's just waiting for Cameron to yeah. call. I mean, shit, he's probably made so much off Avatar, he's chilling, bro. Oh, yeah, I believe it. But it's like, how do you become a better actor if you're forced to not forced, act? Yes, that's what I'm like. Yeah. Man, he, he really ain't got to expand on his career. You would think after Avatar, it's over 10 years old, he, he'd be an Oscar-nominated guy by now. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but it is what it is. But, uh, but yeah, Amber Waves is... You know, she's a beautiful character in a lot of ways because although she is flawed, she's lovable. It's like if you caught your own mom doing something fucked up, you might look at her a little bit differently, which is not going to make you stop loving her. Yes. You yeah. Know, depending and on what it is. But, you know. You know what? You're right. I was watching an episode of House last night and it was about the one Dr. Chase. His dad had come to visit him and he hated his dad. Mm. And the one. uh and he was talking to this kid that said he didn't like his dad, the chase was. And he talks to this kid and he's like, you don't hate your dad. You love your dad no matter what he does. Yeah. Because he's your dad. You're just mad at him. Yeah. You know, you're just upset with him yeah. in the situation. So, yeah. so you're absolutely right. And maybe that's why it's easier because she takes on that motherly role. So mm-hmm. when you see her doing these fucked up things, you're like, ah, it's just, mom's it's just mom, fucked up mom, right mom, now. Mom, mom needed an afternoon smoothie to get through yeah. the day. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's. Amber is is such a great character because, like I said before, that's mom and dad. You go to Jack when you need something. You go to Amber when you need nurturing. Yeah, or so, when you need something from Jack. Or when you, you need can't something from Jack, Jack that you can't ask Jack for. Yeah. Yes, yeah. she'll be a nice middleman. Yeah. Honey, please talk to Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know? Yep, yep. <laughs> so you want him to put you in a movie? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just want something with, to tell my with brothers. With his big ass stomach yeah. sticking out of his <laughs> unbuttoned shirt. <laughs> uh, uh. And like even, yeah, even like Luis Goose, he don't even work for them really. No. But he's a homie. He's invited to every yeah, party. Yeah. You can come over anytime you yeah. want. Like, well, it's because he treats them like royalty. Royalty when they come to the club. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, that treatment probably came from... Of course, they're in the business, but, you know, I don't give a fuck who you are. If you're not cool, I don't give a shit if you're in my club. So yeah. I'm sure they treated him just like a nice guy. was like, hey, we like you. Yeah, and, you yeah. know what I mean? So he they probably developed a nice little rapport over time. And yeah. now he's, you know, he's a part of the fam. So I guess we'll get into the guy, Mr. Dirk. Eddie Adams. Eddie Adams. What do you say? Eddie Adams from Torrance. Yes, uh, yeah, Eddie, Eddie Adams yeah, from yeah, Torrance. Yeah, that's what he says. Yeah. Eddie, after he meets him, yeah, yeah. he's like, Eddie Adams He said, how'd you get all the way here? Took the bus. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he knew how to get around. Yeah. Eddie Adams, uh, a.k.a. Dirk Diggler, played by Mark Wahlberg. Uh, still to this day, my favorite Mark Wahlberg role, and I don't think it'll ever be topped. Um, Not even with the Transformers film? Man, it's the second best role. <laughs> <laughs> he's really good in some movies. I like him in The Fighter a lot. Um, he's He's got some good roles. He has some shit he wants to do, but he's got some good roles. Oh, he's one of those guys, Mark Wahlberg is going to, you know, he's going to give it his all every movie. Yeah, you know, he yeah. does. He's he's reliable. You know, Every movie ain't going to be a hit, but some will be. You know, and, so. and you can tell, uh, especially in this film, like, like you said, he must have had a blast doing it. And you can tell, I think, that he... But especially like the naive Eddie, because it's almost like Eddie is up until cocaine and then it's full. Yes, fledged then, Dirk. It's, then it's Dirk. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and I thought Mark Wahlberg played the naive role so well, because we if you know Mark Wahlberg's personality, that is not him. He's no. not naive at all. No, you know, not I mean, at all. That yeah. dude, you know, he's one of I the most mean, confident actors out. Come on. Come on. Feel the vibration. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Weasel goes pop. bro. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know dude was super in shape handsome like this guy would not be naive and insecure you know so no. but he plays it very well and you got dirk this young kid 17 years old high school dropout he's working at a nightclub that's probably oh, i'm guessing over an hour away from his house yeah, it seems. you gotta take two buses to get to work yeah but clearly he he has a dream and he wants to be in the industry yeah. this was definitely something he has thought about 
he's like, listen, I got a gift. You yeah, know? and you know what? Well, you're right. He was obviously setting himself up to meet the right people at some point. He definitely knew. He knew where to put himself. He wasn't yeah. as dumb as people thought he was. As his mom thought yes. he was. He knew exactly where to put himself. He put himself in a position to get to a better position. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to have to take a little shit to get the good shit. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to take two buses to work, clean dishes, but I can make a little side money. Yeah. Eventually, my time is going to come. And it did. Yeah. So he was a lot smarter than I think people gave him credit for you know and yes he was he wasn't the brightest bulb in the tanning bed but he definitely had <laughs> good a, instincts it's a good know? analogy yeah, i mean he wasn't yeah you know? yeah so he had good instincts and he was a nice person he was a genuine was. sweet person cocaine ruined him but he was a genuine sweet person he was nice to everybody you're right and he changed everyone's perception yes I think, for of, the better yeah for the most yeah. part yeah because everybody missed him when he was gone. Yeah, he made he made Roller Girl want to be a better person. Yeah. You know, he made her... Him leaving opened her eyes to, like, God, I miss Dirk. And, like, I could be doing more. Yeah, I could be doing yeah. more. Him leaving, Julianne Moore's like, dude, I want my son back. Yeah. I want to be a mom. I want to be better. Yeah. You know, Jack, him leaving Jack, Jack realized, like, you know, I thought I could do everything on my own. I thought I can control everything. But sometimes when you got a guy who's the guy, he's the guy. Because uh, John Doe was terrible. He was terrible. Uh, Shut up, bitch. Yeah. You know I mean? I'm like, God, oh, this guy God. is terrible. Uh, and like, you get the Jack so fed up. He's like, and yeah. she's like, is he going to fuck me in the ass? Would you like him to? It'd be nice. Fuck her in the ass. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's weird because I didn't realize it until watching it. Like, Dirk was actually like sensitive to the women that he worked yes. with. Yes. Remember he's like, I yeah. don't like the way he's talking to her. It's not cool. It's not sexy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, oh he's like, I just don't understand why he talked to her like that. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm like, and I like how he approached he had real ideas. Dirk, he may not be the smartest, but he analyzed these films kind of like we do. He was yeah. like, this is more than just getting yourself off in 10 minutes. This is a film. Like, like he was saying, he's like, I want people to watch these films and want to go home and, and make love to their wives or girlfriends yeah. in a beautiful way. You know what I mean? He's yeah. like, he's like, yeah, he's like, cool. You can fuck 5,000, 10,000 girls. That's, that's all cool. But it's really about being with the person you love. Yeah. You know, he's like, this, this is entertainment for us. This is a job. You know, what I'm trying to do is help other people out there and show them that you can be sexy and confident with your lady and sensitive and vulnerable. It was actually a very beautiful way he went about <clears throat> handling general general or gender roles and misogynistic attitudes for the time period yeah so and he got that from jack because remember jack yeah. was explaining to him like he wants to keep people in their seats after, after they, they blow they their load. shot yeah yeah yep. yeah he's mm -hmm. like i want them to stay for the story yep i want them to know what's or to want to know what's going to happen next yeah not just get up after they get off mm -hmm. yeah it's like you gotta that's see... my interpretation of what he said yes like, you know, I, I think that's correct he's like yeah. i, I want to see what Chess and Brock do after I blew my load. You know, yeah, I want to yeah. see if they get the bad guy or whatever yeah. the fuck. You and, know what I mean? And it's cool because then, uh, you know, Dirk was like, he took that to heart. He did. What, uh, what Jack actually told him. Mm -hmm. And he was able to help Jack achieve that at least for a little while. Because remember, the editor's mm -hmm. like, this is the best. It's a real film, yeah, Jack. Yeah, it's a real film, Jack. <laughs> it's the best work we've ever done. <laughs> I'm like, bro, this shit looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, said, I want them to remember me for this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Damn, bro. Yeah. That's like David Lynch saying, I want them to remember me for Dune. Uh, and, he, and you know what? People would remember him. They will. Not not necessarily in a good way. No. They'd be like, oh, that yeah. guy who made that shitty ass dude oh, movie my in the God. 80s. <laughs> my God. So, yeah, I mean, Dirk really, he grabbed the business by the balls. He did, but yeah. But Dirk, unlike everyone else, it was all he had. You know what I mean? Everyone else had something else. You're right, because uh, Reed had Reed was magic. a magician. Uh, um, Buck. Uh, Buck wanted to do stereo. Uh, Home girl was a painter. Yeah, you know what um, I mean? um, Becky Becky Barnett went and got married. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? She wanted to be a wife. So yeah. everyone had other aspirations. Even Roller Girl, she's like, "Why well, want my GED and maybe go to school?" Yeah, you know, everyone had other aspirations. But Dirk was like, "This is where the buck stops for me." Yeah, like this is what I'm gonna do until I can't fuck no more. Yeah, because like even Reed says, you know, you can't fuck forever. You know, you can't yeah. fuck forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it's like he. I think he realized like that's how he can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And 
You're right, because that's all he really had. Yeah, he's like, I want to build a legacy. You yeah, know what I mean, because this is all I got. So I'm gonna put up my all in this, 100. percent I'm in this. This I, is what I'm here for. I almost want to know like what happened to Dirk after, because you kind of see like other people moving on, but you're mm-hmm. right, because he. I'm guessing he stuck. rode it till the wheels fell off, man. Yeah, he rode yeah. it till the wheels fell off. That's what I would think. Because in the eighties, he probably died of AIDS. I mean, yeah, I, just, I mean, but, yeah, you know, you know he, <laughs> who he was based on, or maybe a cocaine overdose. Yeah, you know, yeah. Eventually, got money again. <laughs> yeah, or, or if uh, Alfred Molina's character found him. Yeah. Oh you know? God. <laughs> yeah. So God, that's, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So Dirk is Dirk is this guy that just, I mean, he's he's Dirk is. He's living the American he's, he dream. He is. He really yeah. is. Like, and he's the all American kid. All American kid. You know, yeah. handsome white dude from the suburbs. Yeah. You know, fucking. He grows up. He's banging hot chicks. He's got money. Got the Corvette. Nice house. Everything you want. And he's like fucking eighteen, nineteen yeah. at this point with it's all my this dojo. Shit. It's my dojo. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "These are all my shirts. You know, it's organized by." You know, country and designer. (laughs) (laughs) Italian silk. Italian silk. (laughs) When they all get the same shirt. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Scotty James. Scotty's like, like, "Hmm." he's like, God, I'm so fat. (laughs) But Dirk, like, it just shows you how sweet he's even nice to Scotty J. And yeah. no one's mean to Scotty J. No. But he actually pays attention to Scotty J. Yeah. But everyone else anyone. just kind of ignores him. Yeah, because yeah. Scotty's just there. He's just there. He's a sound he's guy. He's a sound so guy. He's he always, always has to be in the background yep. and out of the way. Yep. He's always in the background lurking around. Holding but Dirk the actually, you know, treats him like a friend, you know, where yeah. everyone else. Scotty was definitely the guy who ain't coming to every single party. You know, yeah. he ain't going to be at every event. But man, when when he saw Dirk when he for saw the first Dirk, time. When he first saw his thing, bro. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Such a game alone. <laughs> yeah. He was like, oh, he like fucking lost his breath for a yeah. minute. When he comes over and introduces himself, he's like, ah, uh, hi. I'm like, yeah. fucking, <laughs> Philip is so good in that fucking role, bro. He, is. he murders it. That fucking role. Philip is incredible in that role. But Dirk, man, like, you just see a guy. What I think another good thing about this movie is, is it shows you how drugs really can change someone. Yeah. Like, for real. Like, Dirk was an entirely different person when he got hooked on drugs versus when he wasn't. Like, yeah, he became a monster. He did, but they also lost Little Bill at they the did. same time. They did. And right? Little Bill, we... I don't think we realized like how important he was to the dynamic of everything. Dude, he he was the like almost like the assistant director. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? He kind of was making sure everybody was where they needed to be. Yeah, making sure people were. I mean, he was. Although Jack, yes, Jack blocks the scenes. Like he was yeah. really kind of doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was getting making sure everybody was set up, checking on. Everybody. All right, you're going on here. You're going yeah. There. They, so he interacted with everybody. Yeah, so everyone was, had a relationship. He was with the glue. Bill. Yeah, and, everyone had a relationship. with And him. once he's gone, everything comes unglued. Including it really dirt. does, including dirt. You know, yeah. I never even really thought about that. Like little yeah. Bill was more vital to the to the fucking cult than you may have thought about. Yeah. What the fuck does it look like I'm doing? Can you close the door? Yeah. Can I close the door? Can I close the door? That's my wife, you asshole. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Bro, I... <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my God. I, I'll be walking out that house in cuffs that night. I'll tell yeah. you what. <laughs> oh, fuck that. The level of disrespect. Oh. Look, William H. Macy, man. He really. Great actor, man. Yeah. Coming right off of Fargo. Yeah. That yeah. was like literally a year later, you know? So he yeah. had a nice little one two punch there. Um, but yeah, it was after that that Dirk. Because that night is when he tried cocaine for the first time. Yep. And, oh, and then, you know, you get this great scene with him and Amber, and she kind of forces him to do it. Yeah. But Dirk being the, I want to please everyone, like we said, what does he say? Do I look cool while I'm doing it? Yeah. All he wanted to do was make her happy, and he was like, well, this is what she wants me to do, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. Not knowing you're about to fucking open yourself up to a whole new world, man. And, and I mean, damn, man. I mean, if a fucking bitch that hot was asking me to try a little cocaine with her, shit. 18, 19 year old me, I can't say what I would have done. <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. me now, a little older, I definitely be like, listen, sweetie, I'll take you on, but I don't need the powder. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, that's all you, yeah, man. Yeah. More for you. You yeah. know what I mean? So, 
But man, 19 year old me of Julianne Moore, Amber Waves, me at 19. She, I don't know, bro. I might have tried a line. You know, <laughs> I can't say. Yeah, you know, if she I, was like, you know, just a bump. I'd be like, great, right, one bump on her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but Dirk is essentially the character that shakes everything up. Yeah. Everyone does gravitate to him in a weird way. He's like, he would be like a mini son. He's um, he's sort of like a catalyst in a chemical equation, right? Yeah. Because he once he's in there, he causes these changes. Yep, yep. And you can't see it without him now. Yeah, so, yeah. Because yeah. then you, you really notice it when he leaves. Mm -hmm. Yes. When he leaves, it's like, God, everything just falls apart. Yeah. And you're like, oh, he was really vital to this. To this. He kind of brought them... He took them from doing good to doing great. Yeah. And now that the they they got a taste of all the greatness, once the greatness leaves, just feels like shit now. Yeah, because we don't know if if uh, Jack's Productions won any awards before Dirk. Yeah, you know, yeah. We don't Was know he winning that productions? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you know. we don't know. Like, Dirk seems to be the one that propelled even Jack to more stars. He definitely did, yeah. You know, it's a Jack Horner production. Jack Horner production, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the war for best newcomer goes to my baby boy, <laughs> Dirk Diggler. <laughs> Yo, I love when he wins the second time, though, man, because you really see the change in him. He's like... Yeah. Like he goes from get, he's like, we're gonna keep rocking and rolling, and I love all you guys. And we're gonna keep making bigger and better films, and yada yada. Second time he said, "Thank you." Yeah, and walked off. <laughs> I was like, but I love that because that's how it would, that's how it is for you know. What I mean, dude, come on, you think, you think Daniel Day felt the same when he won his first Oscar versus his third? He's like, yeah, I've done this before, baby. I've been killing it for years. And yeah, you know, yeah. It is what it is. You know, shit. I know I'm great. Yeah, you know, Dirk knew he was great. He said, I know who I am. Yeah, you know, Dirk. He's all hype. He's got all his AVNs up and shit. Yeah, you gotta watch Red Rocket, bro. Um, Sean Baker. Okay. There's a funny joke in there because it's about this porn star, and he's talking to this little lesbian girl, and she's like, "So I heard you do porn or something?" And he's like, "Yeah, that's right, girl. Five AVNs." She's like, "That's SCD." Adult <laughs> <laughs> video news. Yeah, like, like come on. <laughs> Yeah. It's fucking it's hilarious. <laughs> wow. Dude, that movie is hilarious. You're, you're going to love that when you watch that. But that shit's funny. But so, yeah, Dirk. Dirk is Dirk is the main character. But, like, anyone could be a main character at a given point in the film. So Yeah, that's true. Because the focus shifts a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Roller Girl or Reed? Maybe Reed. Reed, yeah, because they're kind of connected. Yeah. So yeah. we can do, like... We can do Reed, Scotty J, and Ty kind of in one shot. Yes. Because yeah. they kind of all, yeah, they're all together kind of, especially in the second half. Yeah, because he meets Reed first, but mm -hmm. then, yeah, after after little Bill is gone, yeah, they, the he four meets Ty. Yeah, the four yeah. of them are like kind of. And Scotty J just glued to the <laughs> Because he's like, I, I don't care if he's a coke I just want to fuck this guy so bad. Yeah, You yeah. know what I mean? He's like. It'll I never just, happen, but I'm Never happen, hoping. but I'm hoping, bro. He's like. Yeah. Just be. That just shows you Dirk's. Like, just being around him satisfied him. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. you know how us men are, man. You make us wait too long. We're going to lose fucking interest. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm <laughs> like, true. I don't know if that's a hetero thing or, you know, whatever, but. You know, I'm a, I'll, I'll, shoot, I'll shoot my shot for a little bit, but, you know, if I realize I ain't got a shot, I'm going to move the fuck on. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, shit. I, I mean. So, Reed, the uh, the Han Solo lookalike. People tell me I look like Han Solo. <laughs> I'm like, never in your life. <laughs> never in your life, John C. Riley, has anyone ever compared <laughs> you to Harrison Ford? <laughs> Especially that era, Harrison Ford, bro. You like, know, like talking about one of the most handsome dudes at that time. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but you know, he uh Reed, the character Reed, he's just as innocent as yes, Dirk. Yes. Because when they meet, they're almost like competing with each other. But like in the like Special Olympics, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Cause like cause yes. they're both yes. dumb, like yes, like, they're dumb kids. How much do you squat? Three seventy five. He's like, damn, that's a lot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, when he's making the margaritas, yes. he just pour that shit. He's like, up oh, one, two, yeah, five, yeah, whatever. Like, bro, y'all yeah. gonna be fucking dead on the floor and, drinking this shit. And when Jack introduces Dirk to him, he's like, this is a new kid on the street. From the streets. Oh, Jack oh, said you, you live, live on the, street? the streets? Yeah. 
<laughs> he said, "Oh, you work out at uh, whatever the fuck the gym's called." Nah, yeah. want to see you there. Wasn't it like Louis or something? Louis, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I want to see you there. <laughs> yeah. It's like what? Yo, that shit is so funny, bro. And there's like, no way he works out the way that Dirk. <laughs> yeah, does. hell no. Dirk actually worked out. He was in shape. Yeah. But Reed looked like a dad. He had a dad yeah, vibe, yeah. bro. Like, I mean, you weren't, he wasn't fat or anything like that. No, he, was no. a, he was a normal built guy. He was in better shape than I've ever seen him. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, he was a regular built dude. Yeah. I'm like, you definitely don't work out every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, unless you, he's one of those guys who goes to the gym, does one set, and then just talks to people for two hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah everyone, every gym has that guy. He but, breaks a sweat jogging his memory. Yes, right? So, Reed, though, like you said, he's just as innocent as Dirk. Like, he's he's like the lovable idiot. Yeah. He's hilarious. You know, he's goofy. But he's the guy you always love to have around because you know he's always going to be in good spirits. He's a rider. He's going to support the shit out of you, bro. Yeah. Like, when they're making that music, bro, Reed's oh telling Dirk that this shit is fire when it was <laughs> ice. Yeah. <laughs> you got the touch. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god! You got the power. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, when you look in the engineering booth, when when Dirk's spinning the vocals, Reed's in there like yeah. doing the running man or some yeah, shit. Yeah, he's so on. pumped for it. You're a winner, like. Yeah. So and dude, he's playing the guitar and singing along with yeah. them when they're practicing the other song. <laughs> and dude, he sounds even worse <laughs> seeing that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> Have you heard the tapes? Have you even heard them? He's like, we're guaranteed a record deal. Our shit is that good. He said, listen, he's like, what you have here is a YP. You know, that's not an MP. That's a your problem. He said, look, now you're talking all this YP, MP, industry jargon. I'm like, Yo, Reed, Reed gets funny as it goes on. He does. Bro. Like, once Reed becomes a cokehead, yes. he actually becomes a better he, he actually kind of does yeah because yeah. he gets super funny but he gets yeah. smarter in a weird way too yeah <laughs> oh no because he focuses more on his magic then too doesn't he yeah he gets nice he yeah. starts getting good bro remember he yeah. pulls the topless chick out like, yeah, still yeah. Throw a little bit of that flavor in with the you know his old life mixed with his new one but yeah. uh but you know so you got reed and reed you know he's a performer too and him and dirk are like tag team best friends off the bat they're yeah. literally murtaugh and Riggs, like literally yeah, yeah. making a lethal weapon style porno yeah like, they so, are yeah. Like, yeah like those two are attached to the hip and even after shit falls apart they're still attached to the hip which shows you they were genuine friends yeah like if you ask either one of them who's your best friend dirk reed you know what yeah, I mean? like, yeah. easily like so and then we got Scotty J, who we talked a little bit about, played by the late, great Philip Seymour Hoffman, one of the best actors of all time. He gives probably one of the best homosexual performances you're ever going to see, especially for the time period it's supposed to be in. Because, you know, in the 70s, it wasn't that cool to be gay. And, you know, they had a lot of issues. And you could tell he, you could tell he was gay. By the way, he dressed, talked, everything. Yeah. But you can tell he tried to suppress it. As yeah, much he was as he really could. repressed. Yes, he, yeah, as much yeah. as he could, he tried to keep it in. And it show he showed you in that character, like when your desire is high enough for something, you will possibly do things out of your character to obtain that. And he did that with yeah. Dirk. You know, he yeah. wanted Dirk so badly. He probably what he did at New Year's party, even though he was drunk. He's never done that to a guy. Just no. grabbed him and kissed him. No, and all, no. Never, you know. It, he showed a vulnerability to the character that actually makes you, like every other character in the film, you empathize, you empathize with him. You empathize with him. Man. Because, it makes him extremely human. Yeah, because you understand like what he's going through and how he feels because everyone has had probably that moment where you really liked someone and you told him when you were shot and down. And you were shot down. Everyone's yeah. had a rejection. I don't yeah. care. The hottest woman on earth has been rejected before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Trust me. Somebody on this planet at one point or another said, Beyonce, I'm not into you. You know what I'm saying? Somebody said that. At some I can't point. imagine. It, I'm but... like, probably not a lot. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one or two, but she's had probably one yeah. or two, and you, know, you know, in her day. They were probably gay. They might have been gay. And even then, they would have been into her, just not in the same way. Yeah, they'd be like, can we dance together? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Sing songs. Do fashion tips. Fashion tips, right? Yeah. yeah. Man, it's, yeah. It's, you know, some, I'm sure someone turned down Jane Fonda at some, maybe. You know, psychopath. Well, honestly, because of the whole Hanoi Jane thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah actually, yeah. she probably yeah getting yeah. some death threats. Yeah. So, but that, but that pre that, but that has nothing to do with how, how hot she, looks she is. Or, yeah, you know like, what I yeah, mean. Yeah, that has nothing to do with that. It's like people's ire 
for like political statements yes, and stuff. Well, that, like, it really has nothing to do with, you know, the aesthetics of Jane. I'm sure a lot of them vets were like, fuck Jane Fonda, but I'd still fuck Jane Fonda. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know so, what you mean. Yeah. So yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hate like, her, right. but I would make love to her. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, and look, even in, uh, just a quick aside, uh, coming home, man. She oh my gosh. Great in that movie. So she was, good. In her like early forties. Yeah, I think she was probably forty two or three in that. Yeah, movie. but look, she looks looked in, like she was in especially her when they, especially when she got the haircut later on. Oh, oh yeah, she was, and she basically when her style changes, you know, she starts to kind of sway more towards the the hippie yeah, kind yeah. of look, like because you know when it starts out before Bruce Dern leaves, oh yeah, she's, she's very button up like military military wife, wife. and yes. then you know. She definitely starts. Oh man, such a such a that's an underrated. Look, Hal Ashby might film. be an underrated. He's director. an underrated director for yeah, sure. Yeah. You got possibly John Voight's best performance. What he that. got him to do? Because I can't stand. John I hate Voight, John Voight, but I, but I him love him in that. Him in that yo, yeah. I said I was like I ain't never loved John Voight so much. <laughs> so I was like, never. and the soundtrack though. Too. Yo, soundtrack is incredible, and I love yeah. how they let the songs play. Like yeah. when they play, um, uh. Judy, uh, or uh, Hey Jude. Hey Jude, yeah. Yo, they let like, it's like what, a seven minute song? Yeah, the they whole thing. They let like about six and a half yeah. of it play. And I'm like, I kind of wish they wouldn't do that because I'm sitting here singing. Yeah. And I'm not listening <laughs> to what's happening. I'm sitting yeah, here. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. I'm yeah. I'm like, God, I love it. So I'm like, wait, I have no clue what happened to the scene. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. I got all stuck. They played a couple good songs in there. A lot. They had some good stone songs in there. Yeah. So I was like, God. Yeah, I was like, they had two or three good yeah, songs. Yeah, I was like, man, yeah. I'm like, yo, the soundtrack of this shit is slapping. Every time, and they play a fat chunk of the song. Yeah. I'm like, I just missed another scene. Yeah, I'm yeah. What is going on singing, here? You know? I'm like, come on. So, yeah, anyway, that was, uh, it was a quick aside. But, yeah. But, yeah, um, Reed is the rider, the best friend you want. You yes. know, everyone needs everyone and, in and life should have at least one friend like Reed. And Scotty was the same way. He was a rider. Yeah, he loved Dirk. Whether he was a skinny cokehead who couldn't get his dick up, you know, what you write, he was the man because Dirk did lose some muscle mass. He lost. He got like, skinny. Yeah, he couldn't get yeah. his thing up. He's all sweaty and yeah. weird looking and snorting yeah. pink coke or whatever. He said, "Don't try the pink shit, man." That shit. I'm like, "What the fuck is the pink shit?" Yeah. I'm like, "I don't know." But well, well Todd was their hookup. Yeah, he was. Todd was a drug dealer, bro. Yeah, I'm like, was, Todd was yeah. a drug dealer. <laughs> like, he was a stripping drug dealer. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Um, so, because even like when they're before they go out, who's at the hotel with him? Scotty. What's he telling? You guys, please be careful. He yeah. gives a fuck. Even oh, though they're yeah. treating him like shit. Scotty, go over there. Mind your business, please. Yeah. You know, still, I just, I just want y'all to be safe, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's all yeah. he wanted. And I'm like, Scotty, like I said, the scene, like the, the New Year's scene was what really opened the character up. And I was like, this guy's a motherfucking actor, bro. This dude is good. Yeah. The, his look, everything just worked. Yeah. And then, you know. He just kept stacking up fire rolls after fire rolls. Cause like right after that, he did like talented Mr. Ripley. You know, oh my God, you're yeah, right. Like he, he yeah, was in that yeah. playing um, Jude Law's friend. And, you didn't, know, didn't he do like Capote at Capote one point? Capote was like three years after. Capote, no, nah, Capote's like oh, five or six. I think. Okay. Um, but <clears throat> Oscar winning role. Yeah. Which it's not that good of a film, but he's great. Yeah. He, his performance carries you to the end. So. Yeah. Yeah, he's incredible. Um, and then the man's Todd Parker. Todd Parker. Todd Parker may be the best unimportant character in the film, which is why we're talking about him to begin with, because Todd Parker is fucking hilarious. First of all, he looks like a he looks like a porn star. He does. He, he looks more like a porn star than anyone Anybody. else. Yeah, that the mustache, bro, yeah. the hair, everything, just yeah. the way he talked, his whole vibe. Yeah. Oh, when you first introduce him and he asks whose vet is that in the driveway, he lets off all the stats in the yeah. car. You just know you're dealing with a character right there. Yeah. Man. Todd's a dancer. They never specify what type, but like we said, probably Chippendales. Yeah, or something, like, something that. like that. You know, yeah. um, definitely. Risque dancing, yeah. you know, this dude ain't on. I'm sure he's not wearing a leotard. It doesn't matter who he's, yeah, dancing yeah. For. I'm like, he's probably like, you know, I'll shake my wee wee for these guys. <laughs> it's almost like that episode of Always Sunny, like when they, the, I think it's the first episode when when the bar becomes like a gay bar, and Dennis clearly isn't gay, but 
He's fucking playing it the fuck yeah. up for the money, bro. He's in there. He takes his shirt off and he's like flirting with the guys. I'm like, oh my God, bro. This guy. So, yeah, Todd is, you know, but Todd, obviously, you can see he's looking at Dirk and he's like, I want this motherfucker's life. Yeah. You know, yeah. I want to be like this dude. He fucking bitches for money. Brand new orange Corvette in the driveway. This dude had fucked every girl here and they all loved it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, like, goddamn. And I'm fucking. Busting my ass at Chippendales, you know, getting dollars thrown at me. This motherfucker's getting fat checks. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So Todd obviously was drawn into Dirk um, right away too. Obviously, he was already friends with Reed, so clearly he already you know had an in. But that was the Julian Moore giving Dirk the coke that night it was the best thing to happen to Todd because Actually, now that's true, yeah, because right. now his now Dirk has this addiction. You can help supply apply him with. Yes. Yeah, so now you're close with him. So you end up controlling the person who you are you idolizing. Well, idolizing. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. like what it became. So yeah. and of course, like we'll we'll talk about when we get through watchable scenes, but Todd is an incredible character. He's funny as hell, you know, even though he's not in the movie a lot, just what he what he brings to the table for maybe the 25, 30 minutes of screen time he has. Yeah. He's one of the most memorable. Yeah, because he He's the reason for Dirk's downfall, but also the reason for his his picking his himself pick up. back yeah, up. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. his shitty actions opened his head back up, so yeah, which we'll talk yeah. about. So I say we knock out two more characters. We're starting to run a little okay. long. Oh, yeah, Buck, Buck, and and Roller. We got. Oh yeah, yeah, we got, yeah. We yeah, can't not girl. talk about Roller Girl, bro. Yeah. So Buck, we'll knock Buck out quick. Yeah, we actually we talked talk about, about him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Buck, lovable black guy tremendously played by don cheeto oh in an early God. role and got a lot of these guys really took off after, after this, this movie film, yeah. yeah like yeah. don cheeto julian moore mark Wahlberg, philip seymour even, john c even like, tom jane yeah like yeah. all yeah, yeah all the like honestly Look, everyone, tom jane was the best punisher yeah, yeah yeah like honestly there's no like main character in this movie besides maybe becky barnett who didn't end up having at least a decent career. And I think she has had a decent career. It's just, just more just, like, uh, I think she did more, you know, more black shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. So just not more in the mainstream Hollywood. Yeah. Eye. So yeah, she had a, but yeah, she's got a career, but yeah. like, you know, all the other ones, like, like Don Cheeto, if we're going to talk about two black characters, oh, he yeah. took the fuck off. You yeah. Know I mean? Especially, you know, after this was like, we've already talked about like Steven Soderbergh. Like yeah. He like, jumped in the Soderbergh. And man, then he did Oceans. Hotel with Rhonda. Oh yeah. yeah like, yeah. so, he blew, I think he got Oscar now for that. So yeah. like he blew up after that. Like And then Rhodey in the yeah, MCU. Yeah, yep. Like so. Soderbergh really helped him out. Yeah. yeah. I he, think PTA and Soderbergh, mm-hmm. that one two punch. I wonder if Soderbergh talked to PTA about him. Because I think they're friends. And he was probably like, Yeah, he was that motherfucking Don. He's that guy. Yeah. Don Cheadle is so good and out of uh, sight. It's not even funny. Yeah. Like, he's so scary. I'm Snoopy like. Snoopy Miller. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. why the fuck is little ass Don Cheadle, like, actually giving me Tupac energy? Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He, he I reminded me. He used him as kind maybe, of. Maybe. Maybe. And it's like, to Tupac would form the he performance. He just died yeah. when that movie came out. So he was still very fresh and Yeah, his yeah. People watching his movies, all that. So yeah. he probably went back, watched Juice above the rim, Poetic Justice, yeah. like, all those like haunting Tupac roles, gridlocked even like oh, he probably yeah. watched all those and was like, you know what? I'm gonna play this like Pacwood because Tupac played those roles well. Like he really did. Like, and I've been watching a lot of his old shit because I did that hood. Vi- yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Your so best hood movie. Yeah, he he is he was a much better actor than I even think I gave him credit for. But Don Cheadle, what I like about his character, I've discussed before. I can relate to him a lot being a black dude who a lot of people just didn't understand who was into different things and, you know, didn't live the lifestyle that people thought I probably should, yeah. um, which I'm glad in this day and age, like that whole stereotype is getting erased, which is nice. But, you know, me growing up in the early two early mid two thousands, you know, being my formative years, it was like, man, I got a lot of shit for being different, you know, skateboarder being into crazy music and, crazy dress styles and hairstyles and all kinds of shit. But, you know, I was always true to myself and I was always my own, which a lot of people hated, but a lot of people respected at the same time. And I actually, you know, talking to a lot of guys later in life, they tell me, you know, Dom, you 
I never told you this, but seeing you do shit other dudes weren't doing gave me the confidence to do this or that. And I'm like, you know, wow. it's like kind of crazy to hear coming from a random dude that I didn't even like that much <laughs> back in the end. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's like, awesome, though. Yeah, it is. Like, yeah. <clears throat> I'm like, man, it's like, man, I fucking hated you back in the day. But <laughs> you're all right now. <laughs> yeah, wow. So, you know, he was different. He was a Western guy. He liked country music and dressing yeah. up like a cowboy. I, I don't, I'm not a big country music guy, but I do love Western lifestyle and Western films and just the culture of it. I so do you love Yellowstone? Is what you're talking about. I have yet to watch it. I'm gonna wait until it, it looks I, terrible. I, I've seen I, I think it looks though. good. I, but I'm a this, Western guy. But see, I'm not I'm not a Kevin Costner fan. See, and I get that. And Kevin Costner is the one thing holding me back from jumping right into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like he's oh, done good he, things. Yes. Though. I'm like, he's in good movies. He's directed he's done some good direction. Yeah. But Kevin Costner has never been like, I've never watched Kevin Costner. I'm like, God, wow. It's, it's just it. He's yeah, just it. yeah. Like I've never had a he's Christian Bale like, reaction to him. Yeah. You know, he's, I'm He's, he's even. He's even, but I've always felt he's overrated. I'm like, why do oh, people yeah. love Kevin Costner so much? And chicks are like, oh, he was so sexy. I'm like, he was height, I guess. Yeah. I'm like, but... he ain't fucking Brad or Robert Redford or somebody like that. Yeah, I'm no. like, Paul Newman. I'm like, you know, I don't think he's one of those classically handsome dudes or like, I feel like Cary Grant would have pulled more chicks. Yeah, he was you know? good in The Untouchables. As he was Elliot great. He, that's his yeah. best role. You know, but that's... you had Brian De Palma directing. Yes, I'm like Sean got Connery. Sean Connery. Anthony I'm like, or Andy Garcia. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you got Charles Martin Smith, Robert De Niro. De Niro. I was like, yeah. young ass De Niro. Oh, well, he wasn't that young. Yeah, but it's like he was probably like 87, 30s. Yeah, I was like 87 De Niro. Yeah, I was like mid 30s. So yeah. I'm like, so a younger De Niro performance. Yeah, I'm like, and Brian De Palma, any. If you do a Brian De Palma movie before 2000, bro, you're probably going to get a career out of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Look, so, even Brian De Palma directed the first Mission Impossible. Yeah, yeah, and it's so, not bad. Look, Tom Cruise, he was somebody before that, but his career trajectory it took the really fuck off. Yeah. Mission Impossible changed the way he approached his whole career. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, dude, he he put Sissy Spacek on the map. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you're right, Carrie. He, yeah, and wow. like, he took a forgotten Al Pacino from the 70s and resurrected him with yeah. Scarface. So it's yeah. like, he put a lot of motherfuckers on. So I love yeah. Brian De Palma. When I hear people talk shit about him, it makes me mad. I'm How like, can Brian, anyone? I don't, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, he's overrated. Or, All his movies are the same. I'm like, bull fucking shit. Okay, if you want to say Scarface and Carlito's way are similar, fine. But other than that, all his films are totally different from each other. That you can never even tell who directs them. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, shit. Because they're different genres. They're different. Yeah, I'm like, dude's done comedy, horror, drama, fucking action, like gangster. Like, yeah, he's done it all. So, whatever. He's never done comedy, though. Has he? You know why he hasn't? Because someone once told him they're all going to laugh at you. (laughs) That is why. And I honestly don't know if he's ever. Yeah, I honestly don't know if he's ever done comedy, but like, it was a perfect setup I feel for like it. He's done a comedy, not like, not like an overt comedy, but like yeah. something that's funny. You know, yeah. what I mean, like, like the Coens have done comedies. You know, what I mean, they're not yeah. comedy comedies, but well, maybe the Big Lebowski. But like, everything I've seen that he directed was a great film. That, like you said, was different. It's different. I'm like, I, there's so anyone who studies film would look at him as like. Maybe not necessarily an auteur because of that, because usually an auteur, you can tell who directed it. Like you wouldn't think the same guy who directed like The Untouchables and Scarface directed Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible, exactly. But yep. that might have to do with the writing. Like Robert yes. Town wrote Mission Impossible, but he also wrote, I think, Chinatown. Yes, which is that's the thing too, where I think a lot of people discredit him is, I think he is an auteur in a way, but he doesn't write his own shit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people will look at it like, well, if you don't write it too, then well, how can you really make it your own? Well, not all auteurs are writers. A, a lot of the great writes. ones are. Yeah, but, but Scorsese don't write all his shit. Yeah, because you know I mean? look, you have Spielberg. Yeah, exactly. Like, like Spielberg, maybe plotted. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, he gonna take anything. your script and make it his. But oh, he he's gonna, gonna. Yeah, he's definitely gonna make it better. Yeah, but it's like he has the ideas. It's kind of like. Like, Stan Lee, I think, was overrated because every idea he had in the early Marvel Universe was already done by someone else someone before. Else, yeah. But he kind of turned it put on his sauce, head and made yep, it his own. Put a sauce on it. So, put the Stan Lee sauce on it. So it's it's like he's the Shakespeare of comics because mm-hmm. Shakespeare 
took other people's ideas and made them better. I mean, you can say the same, same thing about QT. You yeah, know what I mean, he's taking a lot. Of, he's a, he's like, listen, my film school was watching a bunch of fucking movies. Yeah, you but know what I mean? you can tell that he loves those films. Oh yeah, like without like seventies kung fu cinema, we wouldn't have had Kill. Wouldn't Bill. have had Kill Bill. Yeah. Black exploitation films, we wouldn't have had Jackie, Jackie Brown. Brown. Yeah, yeah. Like, so yeah, he definitely. And I love that like spaghetti westerns, no Django, oh, no yeah. hate for late, you know. So yeah. I mean, he was, and, and I love that he wears his influences on his sleeve. Too. Yeah, you know, he don't try and hide it. He's like. Yeah, Sergio Leone, without him, you wouldn't have QT. You know, you wouldn't have me without Martin Scorsese. And, yeah. You know, I, he likes Brian De Palma, too. Yeah, because um, he's a great, I would say, like, atmospheric director. Because, yeah. like, Carrie, you feel like you're in a 1970s high school. Yes. And the Untouchables, you feel like you're in the 30s. You're in the 30s, for yeah. sure. He definitely got the time period down in that movie. And in Mission Impossible, I still wanted to punch John Voight in the oh face. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a dick. Especially at the end. I'm yeah, like, when they're yeah. on the plane or whatever, or the, whatever the I, fuck Isn't it like on. a train? Train, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they're going through the tunnel. Yeah. They're on the train, and he's like, I'm revealing myself as the villain. I'm like, we already knew this, you asshole. Yeah. We knew that as soon as your face came on screen, yes, we, we knew. knew you were the bad we guy. Knew. <laughs> we knew, buddy. We knew. I'm like, fuck this guy. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, but like Brian De Palma, like, I don't like blow up like with John Travolta. I don't like oh, that yeah. movie that much. It's probably one of my lower rank Brian De Palma, but I still can appreciate it for what he did. The style, like you said, he's very atmospheric. Like, yeah, him and Michael Mann, I think, are some of the best atmospheric directors from the '80s. Like, those two know how to set a fucking mood. They yeah. know how to put you exactly in this mindset they want you. to You were asking me about uh, Manhunter, oh, right? So good. Yeah, bro. that is good. Brian Cox, early Brian early, Cox, early. Yeah, early. He William was really Peterson. good in there. Yeah, and yeah. and there and I'm like. No one, everyone talks about Silence of the Lambs, but I'm like, no one gives Manhunter its credit. Did you watch uh, Easy Money yet? Not yet. That's, okay. I'm going to actually watch that soon. Because the dude that's the killer in Manhunter, I think he's one of uh, Ronnie Dangerfield's friends and he's in funny Easy in Money. Like, that really tall, weird looking dude. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's, he's in Easy in Money. Yeah, yeah. Joe, he and Joe Pesci and Ronnie so Dangerfield are, are buddies. Because he's really good as Hannibal, dude. Like Oh, Brian Cox. Yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah. he was good as Hannibal, but... Like, I don't think you get enough credit for that role. Well, no, because um, no one really heard of him until even in uh, Rushmore, because he's like the the dean of the school in Rushmore. He is, damn. I didn't, and I didn't it was only after that that, that he's in like X Men Two, mm -hmm. and then suddenly after X Men Two, X -Men people are like, "Hey, this old British guy is a good he's actor." A good actor, but yeah, he's, he's been like, acting been for how many decades? For Thirty fucking years yeah. already. <laughs> and now you know with Succession, everybody loves him. But it's like, dude, I, have you watched that? No, but I heard. I it's gotta good. watch that, dude. I, it won all of them. It's it's just been blowing up, man. Yeah. I didn't want to watch it. But anywho, yeah, sorry. sorry, we got sorry. way back, back to, off. Sorry. Okay, back so, to Buck. So Buck. Yes, Buck. Buck just. Wow, that came out of Buck. That came out of Buck. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Yeah, wow. Yeah, because yeah, we started talking about Soderbergh, and then it just went yes, downhill. Yes. But okay. So Buck, Buck is one of them guys that, you know, he's got a lot of friends. But he feels like no one gets him. Yeah, he's like alone with everybody. With everyone, yep. yeah, and, yeah. And it shows in so many scenes. Yeah. You know, at the record store, he's alone with his boss. His boss don't understand him. His yeah. boss is really like, I just really don't get you because you're a black dude yeah. acting like a country boy Yeah, in California. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. you're in L.A. or, or sorry, um, the Valley. Yeah. So you're in the Valley acting like a country dude, but you're black in the 70s. Yeah. Like, you know. You know, he's probably like, okay, no disco, whatever. And, and then um, New no Year's soul. party, too. Yeah, and then he's dressed like Rick James. Yeah, he and is, he with is. the fucking wig on, looks yeah. terrible. As soon as he takes off, my God, that's a lot better, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. And that's a beautiful scene because, obviously, he finally finds someone who understands him for him. Yeah. She didn't care what he looked like. No. She didn't care he was black. She didn't care he had that ugly-ass wig on, even though I'm sure she was like, God, you look a lot better without it. Yeah, oh, yeah, please. She didn't care about none of that. She found somebody she connected with, and same thing with him. And I thought that was a beautiful moment. Yeah, it was about like sunrises or sunsets, yep. right? And they said sunrises are better than sunsets, and which is interesting because most people would say sunsets are better. Yeah. And you know they're having a, a nice, great conversation, but you can just see them when you watch them. You can just see the gaze just growing yeah. and growing between them because of where they are. It'd be sunsets. Because it rises in the east and sets in the west, and yeah. they're in California. Yeah. So they, they would see a better sunset where they are. Yeah, but they liked rises more. Oh, shit. That's what they Oh, never more. mind. They, never they mind. They liked I'm rises sorry. more. 
Yeah. That, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Cool. You know, they needed to be different, though. That was the whole point of it. Yeah, I guess, yeah. In their, and they, they bonded over their mutual differences. Yeah, yeah. Or so. how they're different from other people, I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like... You know, it's just like there's somebody who's always going to prefer the Exorcist 2 to 1, you know. So, Why? I don't know. You know, there's weird people out there. Yeah, um, that's so, true. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, you know, they bonded on something uncommon. And yeah. Buck was looking for that the whole movie. Yeah, he Changing was. his looks, talking to his friends. Talk to a black friend, Becky Barnett, thinking, oh, you know, my black friend's going to give me some good insight. Yeah. She was horrible. She's you like, know, chocolate she's, love. Chocolate love. <laughs> yeah. She said, well, listen, it sounds to me that, you know, your boss at cereal store is saying the same thing I've said. You need a new look. He's like, you get a new look. I have a look. And what look is that? Chocolate love. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hilarious. I'm like, I want to know if PTA wrote that scene. Because if he did, he is very in tune with black people. Yeah, then again, yeah. his wife is black. So <clears throat> they've been a very friend. Really? Yeah, he's married to my real. Is he? Yeah, bro. It's been like twenty years. That's his wife. Yeah. Wow. Twenty. I think it's twenty years, bro. They have I, like four kids or something. Because I remember, uh, you know, he used to date Fiona Apple. Way yeah, back yeah. Way. And then you know, him and QT are the reason she stopped doing coke. You did tell yeah, me that. Cause yeah. They were so coked up, running their mouth. She's like, I can't do this no more. I'm not sober. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And that was the wow. end of PTA Fiona Apple. <laughs> Wow. Interesting, right? I didn't know that he was married to Maya Rudolph. Yeah, though. bro. Long time. Wow. Yeah. Back from when she was on SNL. Like pre, yeah. Uh, Pre-Bridesmaids. Yeah. Wait, yeah. they, Dude, they were already together for like 10 years when Bridesmaids came out. I wonder if they met when he was like a guest writer on SNL for that it must week. must have been. Yeah. God, I could just... And it's weird, like, because, like, she is an inherent vice and, like, playing a small... She plays small roles in a couple of his films. And it's always weird to see her, like, oh, yeah, they're married. That's, like, That's crazy. Age, right? I'm like... And I'm like, she's not the type of actress who would ever star in a PTA movie. Yeah. You know, but I know there's been times he's like, I would love to direct my wife in one of my movies, but... There's she's, no way she she just don't have the acting chops to be in a PTA. Movie. No, because she's too <laughs> she's funny. just comedic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Great, she has a comedic. She approaches acting from a comedic mindset. Yeah, and she's great at it. She though. is. She's great at what she does. But yeah. I just couldn't see her playing more than the receptionist in his movie or the waitress. Or she always plays a little role like that in one of his movies. But it's yeah, it is funny. But uh, Buck, Buck is. I, I like the time and care PTA took and used his used to write that character and i wonder if he had a friend or somebody like that in his life who reminded him of buck because yeah. buck feels like he was written from a place of experience he must have like he he must have known about the industry because well you know he, he, he did that short porn. film yeah, he worked in porn beforehand too so remember it, he was a porn guy he worked in porn i think he worked at a porn theater or something really him and qt did really i think that's how they first bonded over porn wow yeah. <laughs> wow yeah i mean hey whatever whatever works you know yeah i mean hey when i was back in seventh grade i, I had a friend his name was yuri he was cool how we became friends porno swaps really yeah we traded a couple pornos and that's wow how we became friends yeah wow he was like bro i got some of this, were, this were they this. discs or videotapes disc, yeah. this okay. is seventh grade we okay disc I'm not that old yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, so, tapes. Come on. So, so he got to see uh, uh, Dave Bautista's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, really. We, we did. We, I, so <laughs> he's the one who gave me One Night in Paris. Oh, really? Yes. He gave me wow. One Night in Paris. So he's wow. like, bro, you got to watch this, John. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember I gave him uh, this Latina one I had for that one. And, well, we traded a bunch, bro. Like. Oh, I'm not even. Wow. Gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna get. Wow. We're not gonna get the titles. That's crazy. Um, yeah, because yeah, Wait, we could do titles from like clerks, like all holes. Yeah, all, God, well, yeah. Well, come I, on, Eileen. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, BBCs with pearly white. Something. Yeah. <laughs> girls yeah. that crave something. Yeah. Girls that crave some. I can't yeah. say these damn titles on here. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> what all what is it all tip fucking something yeah <laughs> men alone to the ky connection yeah <laughs> <laughs> coming in socks <laughs> <laughs> some fucking random ones dude he's like uh, oh and what was that one she wanted <laughs> i'm on the phone with the distribution center i'll see if they got it right now 
Happy Scrappy Hero Happy Puffs. Scrappy Hero Puffs. She loves it. Yeah, I can tell. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh god that movie's fucking great that, that movie never gets old i watch that movie anytime but so yeah yeah buck is the man and and he just wants to change his life just wants to change his life especially after he finds someone who understands him for who he is yes and instead then, of for who he's trying to who be he's trying to be yeah yes yeah. and that's the beauty of his character and he has one of the best arcs i think going into the end of the film he has one of the happiest lives oh my god he you does I mean? so he does and I actually, right now, I just have to look up uh, the, the name of the woman who ends up getting with him. Yeah. Because yeah. it's really bugging me that I don't yeah. remember. While you're doing that, I'm going to bring up Heather. Or, um, yeah, sorry, yeah, Roller, Roller Girl. Girl. Yeah. yeah, so Roller Girl, played by Heather Graham, who, last but definitely not least, Heather Graham in her prime, looking good. You see all of her in this film, and you will not be upset. <laughs> uh, Roller Girl is a young girl. Uh, I think she's supposed to be, what, Dirk's age, 17? Yeah, she's getting ready to graduate yeah, high school. Yeah, she's in high school, 16, 17. Yeah. So, she's a young woman who, you can tell she comes from some kind of trauma. Jesse? Jesse. Yes. That's right, because he's like, Jesse painted yes, that as well. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, all right, thank God. <laughs> all the Jesse paintings. Yes. So, uh, Roller Girl, she she wears skates all the time, which is why her name is Roller Girl. Yeah, because in the ex- 70s, roller skating was huge. It's a huge debate on who came up with the idea for her to do that. PTA is trying to take the credit. There's some other dudes who are like, no, I came up with that. Whatever. But if he wrote the film. You got to give him the credit, right? Yeah. Like, like, you got to anyway, give him the credit. But, so, PTA, uh, I, I'm guessing he was watching drugstore cowboy and and uh is that matt uh, dillon matt dillon yeah mm, great film uh gus van zandt yeah i'm guessing he was watching that and then he was watching swingers and you know stuff like that so that's probably oh, where swingers. he was yeah that's great oh film. yeah heather graham yep, yeah heather graham, man. yeah um so he got her and i think she was a perfect cast she had the right look she was the right age and she had the right attitude and she wasn't scared you know she yeah that, that was a that was a pretty showy part for where she was at that point in her career. Yeah. So yeah, you're and right. She grabbed that part by the balls and said, let's do it, baby. So roller girl, man, she's obviously going through some trauma. She doesn't have real parental figures. So she's clung. She lives with Jack and um, Amber. Amber. She, she had does, her own room yeah. and Jack treats her like his daughter. Move the dirt from <laughs> one side of the room to the other side of the room. You know? Yeah. She literally, they treat her like a daughter. She comes home. You know, she has her own room, and I'm yeah. sure they've never made her feel like anything less, no matter what she's ever done or whatever. You know what? You're right, because that one scene where, you know, Jack's beating the shit out of the guy, and then she's kicking the shit out of him, and she's like, you you never touch me or whatever. After mm-hmm. he, that kid from high school. Yep. Like, Jack never made her feel that way. Never, but never, not do. once, not yeah. once did Jack ever make her feel like that. Yeah, and like, and he's even saying like, when the dude's getting all, you know, he's getting a little aggressive with her. He's like, bro, this is roller girl. Your dude, yeah. treat her like such. You yeah, know? yeah, like she's like porn royalty. Yes, he's yeah. like, you know who you're about to fuck, dude. Yeah, like you acting a fool. You know what I mean? Like, bro, calm it down, bro. You you know you're going to shoot your load too soon anyway. So <laughs> because it's roller girl. Yeah, bro, you might not even make it there. Yeah, like, yeah, so, that's true. That's like so you already know, calm down. He's giving you a real piece of advice. And dude, did he wanted to fuck that girl from back in high school. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, he's been so, waiting how many years? Yeah, I'm like, oh, let me do this right. I'm like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Crack my fingers and shit. Yeah. So, I mean, you can see that everyone cares for Roller Girl in the group. No one ever makes Roller Girl feel like some high school dropout slutty piece of trash. Yeah. Which is what the world would probably perceive. Yeah, as. yeah. Especially in 1978, 9. Yeah. 80, I, yeah, you know? that was the early 80s yeah, at that point. Like, yeah, that's what, yeah. you know, late 70s, early 80s. That's yeah. what you're going to be looked at as a piece of porn trash. Yeah, because look at when Buck was trying to get that loan. Yeah, yeah you're bro. a pornographer. Stop saying pornography. <laughs> yeah. I, I am an actor. Yeah, okay? yeah. And I felt bad for Buck because it's like, bro, what I'm trying to do has nothing to do with porn. Cause yeah, like, yeah. Bro, I'm literally... No one knows you're the bank that's giving me a fucking loan. Yeah. You think people are coming here. So what bank gave you your loan? 
It's an ass no one ever yeah. walked into a business. The, yeah. the porn bank? Yeah. Yeah, the porn bank, yeah. But the thing is, if they know he's a pornographer, they would know he's good for the money. To yeah, I'm like, well, steady you work. got steady income, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, shit. But but that proves your point. Like, that is how the world That was the perception of the, how the world perceived these types of people. And I mean, let's keep it I still do. Not as oh, bad, yeah, yeah. you know, with OnlyFans being, like, one of the biggest things ever. You know, it's yeah. not as bad. But, yeah, I mean... It was a very Christian America back then, you know. And, <laughs> yeah, you know that that goes against everything God would have wanted. And of course, that bank's thinking, "Let one wrong person find out we endorse this guy, we're done." I just realized something when you said that it was a Christian America. If you're looking at like the first part of the film, like before that New Year's scene. It's like Jimmy Carter era. Yes. And then the cocaine stuff happens during the Reagan Reagan. era. Yep, we get into Reaganomics. Yeah, oh my God. I didn't even think about that either. I was like, you do go from Carter to Reagan in that time period. Yeah. That was definitely a shift in the country, man. Because then the war on drugs got crazy and shit. So, yeah, that that definitely made... And, and I wonder if PTA is just that brilliant where he actually... He probably thought of that. Yeah, probably. Like, Like, this is the difference between, like... Let's say like a Democrat and a Republican, and a Republican in, yeah. in the leadership role. And he's, yeah. How he's, it affects these characters. About at least five or six years older than you, at least. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I he think. He would have been a young kid. I think he was born in like 70. Yeah. So yeah. he would have been like nine, ten. He remembers that. Yeah. He yeah. probably remembers that. So, yeah, that would make sense. Um, But Roller Girl, you know, she just wants a family. She just yeah. wants to feel like she's a part of a family. And whether she wants it be the a, same thing Buck wants. Buck wants, yeah. yeah. A family, same thing Dirk to never got to be accepted. Yeah. You know, and I and I don't think Roller Girl ever really gave a shit about the porn fame. I just think no. it, to her it was like, I'm getting paid to have fun with my family. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because like Dirk, even though they fucked, it's like, that's my brother. That's my brother. Yeah. Yeah, that's my bro. This is my mom. This is my mom. Yeah, I yeah. I might have entered her and came in her, but yeah. that's my mom. <laughs> yeah. You know, should we cut to the stock footage? What? Are you crazy? It won't match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, like, so... Yes, although we got some weird family dynamics going yeah. on. It's a family nonetheless, bro. These yeah. people looked out for each other. Bro, you call one of them up 2 o'clock in the morning, bro, I got booked. All right, I'll be right down. You yeah. know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah, because that did happen. It actually did happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, I, I didn't even think about yeah. that, but that did yeah, happen. Colonel, right? Colonel, yeah. Yeah. And then when you got there, you got to, I got to say no, bro. I can't condone you, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro. I'm like, this bank does not endorse pedophilia, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, come yeah, on, bro. I gotta leave. I'd much rather endorse pornography than that. So, <laughs> um, so let's. We ran through most of the characters, which so let let's talk about. Let's get into our questions. Okay, right? yeah. So, all right, we'll run through this quick because we're. I know we're running up, but guys, we've been waiting to do this we shit. Have been. And and this is actually shorter than the other two. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, yeah. it's, we, we're, it's, but, it's but gonna we probably end up yet. being about the same time. Yeah. All right. So, as you guys know, for those who haven't seen it in a while, you know, after after we go over the film characters, whatever, we ask some questions and answer them. So, MVP of the film, Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds is a good choice. And Philip Seymour Hoffman. Ah, I like that. Yeah. Philip Seymour is definitely. Yeah, I think. Ah, like, oh, he's so good. But Burt Reynolds is also like I think it's his peak season. It's, his peak it's season, like his yeah. best. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, I like Burt Reynolds for an MVP because like, and I think it was a well deserved Oscar nom too. Yeah. Because he did, really did he, he win sh- or no? He didn't win. Unfortunately, okay. he showed us something we never seen from. Him. Yeah, and he showed that he could be an actor. And it's like, where was this twenty years ago, asshole? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I was like, man, exactly. you could have been, you could have been Steve McQueen level. You yeah, know? yeah. Like, if Steve McQueen didn't die, like, man, who knows what he would have got to, bro? Yeah. Like, he was booming. So, yeah, I like that. My mine PTA for MVP, man. Oh yeah, he, he yeah. just what he twenty six years old writing this, directing this, directing these. All these people are older than you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It, like, only one who probably wasn't was Mark and Heather. Yeah. They are probably the only ones younger than him. Actually, or the yeah, same age. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, because Mark Wahlberg was probably maybe 23. Heather Graham was probably 23, 4. So they're, yeah. you know. But other than that, everyone's significantly older for the most part. Like, Bert got 25 years on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? If Julianne not more, got yeah. about 10. Yeah, you know, Louise had to have about fifteen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, 
Don Cheadle probably had at least five on him at the time. Yeah. He was probably like 30, 31. So, yeah, I, I mean, to do what he did, that's it. So, peak season, we both had the same Yeah, answer. Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds for peak season. It, yeah. It's kind of obvious. I think everyone in this movie, including the director himself, has outdone themselves in this film, um, except Burt. And, unfortunately, this was one of, like, Burt's last, like, yeah. real roles. So, we didn't get to see if he could possibly top this. Yeah. But, um... And that's sad because he... He didn't die for a little while, though, until after this movie. When no, did he die? 2009 or 10? 8 or 9, yeah. something like that. But it's like, yeah, so he had time to take the lessons that he learned about what he's able to do. But I, I don't know if anyone would have had good roles for him for at him that age. For him at that age, yeah. Yeah, and that's sad because he was incredible. He was, and it's like, in the roles they would have had. And he was in great somebody shape, they too. Would say, yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. Right, when he gets in the hot tub, he's yeah. looking good. I'm yeah. like, dude, he was looking right. Because I'm like, and, and unfortunately at that time, if they did have an older guy role, there was somebody else in line in front of him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, Like, he could have played Elliot Gould's role in Oceans. Oceans. Oh, yeah. He would have been perfect. Yeah, he would have been. been. perfect. Soderbergh would have directed the shit out of Bird, yeah. man. Actually, I do love Elliot Gould, though. Yeah, man. he's you great know, in those I movies. Yeah. And Gould. obviously in MASH. And, oh, of course. Yeah. All, any, all Robert Altman and Elliot Gould comedies yeah. are good. So, like, they did like two or three. Yeah, they there. did a few California Split. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah. That's the shit. Uh, Elliot Gould's great in there. So, Burt Reynolds. Yeah, Burt Reynolds. We got that. All right. Best quote is that I'm just gonna give this to you, dude. All right, I'll, I'll, you know, you know the entire film. All right, I got, I got the quotes. Like off the like, top of your head, I did have write. some best quotes. Um, oh, in the so, state I'm in. Yep, yo, yeah. Yep, uh, <laughs> so that whole scene is just a fucking. It's great. So you got the scene where you know Dirk and uh, Dirk's all coked up and he's getting pissed at the new guy getting attention. And he comes out and he's basically like, Jack, I'm ready to fuck. And Jack tells him. I am not going to shoot you in this state. He said, what what state, Jack? State of California. I know where the fuck I am, Jack. <laughs> and then, of course, when Amber Waves comes and tries to calm him down, he said, hold on. You, you're not my mother. You're not my fucking mom. Another great quote. Um, one of my favorites from early on is when Buck's at the stereo store showing the white dude that country music. Oh, my God. And the fucking boss comes up to him. He said, what did I tell you about playing that country shit in here? <laughs> he said, Jesus, what kind of soul brother are you? <laughs> <laughs> that shit uh, cracks me up, uh, bro. Like, poor Buck. Oh, my. Poor Buck, Because he's just, like, staring at him, like, uh... You know, because he's trying to be... He's like, yeah, he's like, you don't even have the words. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't even have the words. And he's like, God, did this white dude just tell me, ask me what kind of soul brother yeah, I am? Yeah, yeah. And it's like... <laughs> and he couldn't even answer him. Couldn't he answer because he's like, shit, what kind of soul brother am I? And that might be, as early on in the film as it is, that might be Buck's turning point where he's... And that's why he's like trying like the trying Rick to, James. He was like trying to stuff. find his identity. When yeah. Really, it's like, you he was trying to be it. more of a soul brother. Yes. Yeah. He's yeah. like, how do black dudes act, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or when Phil Baker comes in and they're talking about going from uh, oh my God. film to video. Oh, uh, He said, listen, I, I enjoy the simple things in my life. You know, like butter in my ass and lollipops in my mouth. That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I la- I s- every time uh, I hear that quote, I can uh, see that movie a million times. I still laugh like it's the first. But it's the way he delivers the line. It's, it's his the voice. way he delivers and his it, face. No, oh, it's like that dude saying it. He's yes. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, how do you get Phil Baker to say this shit? Oh my <laughs> god! They did a lot of work together. Phil Baker's the main guy in his first feature, Heart really? Eight. Yeah, wow. Phil Baker's the lead in Heart Eight. Him and John C. Oh um, wow! And then he's in Magnolia. He's in Boogie Nights. I'm like. He worked with him until he died, pretty much. Wow. Um, Phil Baker was good. Or, um, oh, people tell me I look like Han Solo. <laughs> great, yeah. great quote. Cool. Or, or right after that, wait, you live on the streets? Yeah, yeah. That's actually what I put. <laughs> yeah. You live on the street? <laughs> That's right. It's like, it, but it shows like his naivete. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God. He, oh, you don't need to go to the gym. Lord. He's a dumbbell. He's a dumbbell. Yes. Yeah. Oh just my. bench press him. Yeah. Yeah. So fucking funny. Um, wait, I had one I didn't write down that just popped in my head. And then it just went away. Oh, Scotty J, can I kiss you? 
Oh. Can I kiss you on the mouth? <laughs> yeah. And what does he say over and over again when he's sitting in his car after? I'm a fucking idiot. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fucking idiot. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> his acting is so good there, yeah. bro. I'm like, even though you kind of want to laugh because it's funny, it's like, damn, you bro, you him. feel him. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Feel that dude. That and that's fucking the whole film idiot. is like an emotional roller coaster because you you feel God. how human. These characters, like, you're not watching a movie, you're watching a documentary. Mm-hmm. That's almost what it feels like. Oh, my God. <laughs> what about f- another quote I like, a random one from Roller Girl. She's like, well, I like Dirk because, you know, he can fuck hard, and, you know, he can fuck soft. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so many fucking uh, random ones. <laughs> you want five or ten? Five or ten? You know, if you want to just look at it, you know, it's only five. But if you want to see me jack off, you know, it's just ten. <laughs> and and you've done this tonight? Yeah, a couple times. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, the, just how casual he was about it. I'm like, yeah. how many dudes pay you for this? Yeah. So I just... Dudes or women, though. Women? T- yeah. Dude, it's probably mostly fucking dudes. It probably bro. is mostly, mostly dudes. Because later on in the film... Yeah, bro. I'm like, let's yeah. keep it real. Yeah. I, if he did it ten times a night, it was two girls and eight guys. And honestly, you know? that's probably why he worked there because it was probably an area where he'd be able to get money. For it was that. easy to get paid. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm like, there was de- it was definitely a more metropolitan area than where he was. So, yeah, yeah. You know, you got sleaze balls who would pay a fucking teenager to watch him pleasure himself. Yeah. Okay. Um. Whatever's clever. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's. You know, there's a ton of good quotes. We could, I could go on and on. I'll probably throw some out as we go on. Okay. All right, so what's aged the best and the worst? Mm-hmm. I put uh, the the whole film is aged the best, but yeah. the worst is like when Colonel James gets arrested. Yeah, because of why he gets arrested. That's pretty bad. Like, yeah, pedophilia has not aged well. It no. wasn't good there, and it's probably aged even worse now. Because it sounds terrible to say. At least like Dirk when he started was like seventeen or eighteen. I mean, it is better because let's but, keep it real. Seventeen year old is basically an adult, bro. Yeah, and. And depending on what the legal age of consent is in the state of yeah. California in like 1977, yeah, you know it's legal at mm-hmm. least. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, because like, dude, like, there's a big difference between a 17 year old and a 12, 13 year old. Yeah, like, there is it's a huge difference. It's huge. Yes. Like, you are not even close to the same person you are at 12 than you are at 17. You're no, an entirely yeah. different person. Yeah. Like, that's a gap. Um. What's age the worst? You said. All right, you said. Right, what's age? You got the whole movie. So, yeah, I, yeah. what age the best for me? The opening shot. Oh my god! You know, still incredible. Still incredible. The whole way he shoots it. The long take. It, it's incredible. That's age the best. I think guys are still trying to like figure out how do you capture that magic of that. Yeah, because you really introduce nice. everybody in one scene. Yep. And the whole vibe of the film. Yep. You put the vibe. With a great song, and yeah. it just sets you up for a ride. QT still said he's like, I don't know how he fucking pulled that shit off. I mean, it's so effective. He's like, yeah, it grabs you. What's yeah. age the worst? I have to say cocaine use. Oh yes, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I mean, do people still just? Do, I mean, I know obviously people still do coke, but like, do you have those common cokeheads who just like do coke? Like, whatever, yeah, have some cocaine. Like, is that still a thing? Or I don't know. Do people I know, try and hide it. I know in the seventies and the eighties, especially in California, it was a big deal. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, but now I feel like yeah. unless you're like rich, like yeah, you I feel can't... like it's done in the small corner of a party now instead of just putting it. Yeah, right yeah, right yeah. on the glass. Yeah, table. right on the glass table. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah, uh, I. Yeah, yeah so, let's, let's do a line, everybody. Yeah. We'll line dance. We'll line dance. Yeah. All right. Uh, most rewatchable scenes? Uh, I put that opening shot. Yes, of course. And uh, the both party scenes. Yes. Because of the, the first party scene and the 80s party yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and the donut shop. Oh, my God. That's, you know, that was one of my ones. You yeah. Know? So you had a couple I have. The first party scene and second party scene. Yeah. Little Bill suicide more specifically. Yeah. Um. I had, of course, um, the montage of success oh, where yeah. you see Dirk getting the house, the money, buying the clothes, yeah. dancing with Roller Girl, and she's on skates, oh, and yeah. he's on, and he's got his platforms on, and he's talking to her about something she could give a total fuck about. Yeah, yeah, the but Italian she's just li- Yes, yes, yeah, yes. She's just listening, being a sweet girl. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, because they're, yeah, that's right, they're on the floor. Yeah, and like, it's just a cool transitional scene. Yeah. Um, of course, 
I'm not going to shoot you in this state. Yeah. You know, of course, just that scene where he's in the bathroom trying to get it up. Super yeah. funny. Um, and fucked up at the same time. Uh, of course, um, like you said, the donut shop scene. One of the craziest chain of events. Oh, like, my God. Scenes that that's like a Quentin film. Tarantino scene. It is. That's what I was like. QT. Yeah. Like, that's where I think PTA was watching, like, Pulp Fiction. He was yeah, like, I need yeah. something. I need a quick wild boy and my shit like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, that's a great, great scene. Um, I mean, God damn, the whole fucking movie's rewatchable. I mean, the scene. Yeah. Dude, Dirk's first scene with Amber. Yeah. Like, to see where he started and where he went to and and like her acting in that scene like when she's actually like oh yeah acting for them filming it's this so is terrible cock yeah <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. should have been the best quote yeah <laughs> yeah it should have been yeah oh and she's standing there with a with an ass in her cock yeah That's a good yeah, quote too. That is a quote. yeah yeah well what's wrong bill well, you, you got somewhere to go? Yeah, I'm like, bro, yeah, and he's like, oh, don't worry about that. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah, because I'm supposed to be able to focus on something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. He's been he's been cucked how many times oh, by this phone? Oh, my Lord. Too many. Probably, bro, we only see it, like, three, but, like, I'm sure it's way more. Yeah, it's probably daily. Yeah. And I mean, like, Nina Hartley is, like, you know, a porn star anyway. Yeah, so she was like, oh, yeah. no problem. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? You need me to do what? Yeah. Sure. I love sex. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, that's, oh, God, there's so many fucking rewatchable scenes in that. I mean, the, the, of course, the ultimate rewatchable scene, though, is when they go to the dude's house to sell him the coat. Oh, Alfred Molina. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. Firecrackers. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's Vietnamese. Yeah. Oh, firecrackers. Like, random, yeah. bro. His, his, uh, well, whatever his name was, his awesome mix six. Yeah. With, so very three before? very good songs are played in that sequence. You got um, Sister, Sister Christian, Christian ninety nine Red Balloons, and Jesse's Girl. Rahad Jackson. Yes. Um, so you got three great songs played in that scene, and they're pretty much played all the way through. Yeah. And for whatever reason, that scene kind of really shows you we're not in the seventies no more. Yeah. With the music, the drugs, the look of everything. Yeah, you're right. Like, it's his house was very modern. Yeah, for the, yeah. For the time it was supposed to be in. Yeah, you're getting into that like Miami Vice. Miami era. Vice era. He had the, yeah. the pink lights in the house. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, like uh, the 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 his weird bodyguard neon. had had the little like open shirt, like little button up thing yeah. going on, looking real fucking Florida almost. Yeah, even there yeah. In Cali. Uh, yeah, it was. It showed you the shift in the time period, and not only that, it's funny as hell. He said. You know, he said, go in the bedroom. He said, under the master bed. Yeah. In the safe. On the floor. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, he said, what are you talking about? Let's just leave. He said, he's got coke and he's got money. And we're <laughs> fucking stupid if we don't leave here. <laughs> he said, no, nah, no, nah, we're we not going nowhere. No, no, no. Guys, I said, we want something else from you. Tom was great yeah. in that scene, bro. He but, stole that scene. And like, uh, and like Dirk and uh, and Reed, they're just like, they're what like, bro, the fuck? get the fuck out of here, right? Yeah. They're like, dude, oh, what are you? Yeah. He's like, I mean, he had a plan that he definitely didn't tell them about. Yeah, you know? I mean that that whole scene is and look, fucking like, great. You said earlier, Scotty told him to be just be he careful. Told him to be careful. This guy knew. He's like, look, eventually, he's like, bro, y'all trying to scam someone out of five grand. Yeah. They're going to check that shit, bro. Yeah. Like, That's insane. what I was scared of. I'm like, this dude is checking He's this checking joke. right now. I thought, you know, and like, that dude's oh. going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Snorting yeah, whatever like, baking powder like, or something. Yeah, yeah. It was baking, yeah. I think it was baking soda or yeah, something. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm clean with this shit. Yeah. yeah like, bro, <laughs> Put yeah. this in the back of the refrigerator. Yeah, like, what the hell? So, <laughs> yeah, those, oh, so, so many good scenes. I mean, the ending scene. Too, where he has his monologue and oh yeah reveals himself yeah that's another good one um best character i think uh jack dirk reed and buck really because they even though jack is kind of like steady throughout the whole thing he still learns he learns things yeah yeah there's, there's a bit of an arc but i think you know dirk reed and buck have maybe the best arcs for uh buck has like a whole redemption arc he does and reed also now that i think about it because after that scene that we just talked about where you know todd ends up getting murdered and 
Oh, so he runs off. Dude's a magician now. He made right? himself disappear. Right, he really did. <laughs> Yo, that motherfucker, he ran out that house and never looked no, back. He no. was like, I'm about to jump in my hat. Shit. Yeah. And then Dirk realized what he needed. He needed that uh, that family that like Roller Girl needed because you know of the rejection from his mom. And his dad was so passive with his mom. You know, he yeah. needed a strong father figure and a mother figure. Yeah, because his him. yeah, because his dad was soft as fucking Charmin, bro. Yeah, yeah. He's like he, she, he's sitting there listening to his mom cuss him out. I'm like, yo, leave the little motherfucker alone, yeah. bro. Damn, he just walked in the door. Shit, you be mad because he got some tail. Shit, be happy he getting some tail. Yeah, like y'all go fuck that little whore. Yeah, yo, hey, yo his mom was crazy. <laughs> that she Cheryl said, Lee whore. She, she said, "You think I don't know what you're doing in there with your music and your posters on the wall?" Yeah, huh? I wash your sheets. I wash your sheets, huh? <laughs> He's like, she's a little tramp and she's a little piece of trash. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like a real mom, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. like the disapproving mother. Like for real. Uh, so funny. But my best characters, I had, of course, Buck. Buck is one of the best. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, he is. Especially that donut shop. Yes, scene. man. That really Man. He solidifies said, I'm, I'm, him. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. He said, "You shut the fuck up." <laughs> yeah, like, he said, "Don't even move, bro." I'm like, yeah. And then you just got this random redneck reading guns and ammo who's yeah. just fucking right in the right place at the wrong time. Yeah, like, uh. man. You should have shot that dude in the head, bro. <laughs> like, what a chain of events. But anyway, yeah. so Buck, I I I gotta put Jack in there, man. Jack is incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um. There's so many. I'm only gonna pick three though. I'm gonna almost, cut some out. Almost every character. Yeah, great, dude. I'm though. like, God, That's, I could just can name them all. Great about everyone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna only go three. I'm gonna go with Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, yeah. Scotty, man, yeah. he's fucking good, man. The acting's too good. Worst character? I think the Colonel. That's who I had too. Honestly, I think yeah. that's. He'd yeah. probably be a unanimous. Yeah. You know, is there any, there's really no other really unlikable main character. Like, yeah, no. Like, even when people are assholes, you still forgive them. You can't yeah. forgive the colonel. No, not at <laughs> all. Especially, yeah. Especially after like after jail. he's in jail, you're like, eh. yeah, you just stay there. Yeah, stay right where you at, bro. Yeah. All right. Um, nitpicks. I, I told you this before. Uh, not enough Becky Barnett. Di- hey, I'm, after looking at her, I'm yeah. with you. I'm that, with that's you. That's the only nitpick I really have. Becky Barnett? He said, yeah, so what's sign is? She said, I'm a Pisces. He said, what? I can't date no Pisces. Yeah, like, yeah, like, what? I'm like, yo, people took astrology serious back in the they day. They did, man. I'm they like, did, Listen, man. It's fun to look Macro at. Man it. and astrology. Yeah, it's man. It's, it's fun to look at and shit and, like, compare, but, like, your fucking birth date is not going to tell someone whether you actually are compatible with somebody. You have to actually date them you know yeah, I mean? like getting to know them out. would help better because i've been compatible with girls i'm not supposed to be compatible with and incompatible with girls i'm supposed to be compatible with wow so it's like and then sometimes it's like wow we really do interact the way this sucks but whatever you know it's all just fucking generalizations yeah, it's kind of like a nostradamus prediction yes yes like, like after you can fact, never you be can... wrong yeah, yeah it's like we can look back and be like oh hey yeah know? yeah it's almost like a hindsight type yeah deal. this might be what he was talking about yeah like uh-huh. i think i see the gun yeah. all right so uh yeah my nitpicks i mean i don't really have any bro i can't yeah pick out how can any. You? i just love the film too much i've grown up with it and loved it too much it, to really pick out something like for you it might be why just add in the deleted add scenes. in delete yeah yeah add that you know what yes cut. director's cut three hours yeah. long and i'm totally i'll buy that shit on steelbook first yeah. day no problem <laughs> yeah all right one of my favorites recast and couch all right so who, who you got all right so we'll, we'll just we'll just do a few of them all okay. right well, jack Jack, you already know. We've discussed this. You know, yeah. I like, I like, I like who you said, Sam, Sam Rock, Rock. But you know, George Kloon is the man for the job. There's you know a what? lot of guys though, like some, like I said, Josh Brolin could play it now. Yeah, yeah, he would be really good actually. Um, my only problem with Clooney is it would turn into the George Clooney show. Yeah, the same thing with like Brad Pitt's Brad, age appropriate now. But oh my god, if Brad Pitt played Jack Horner. They'd be trying to figure out how we turn this into his story. Yeah, how do you we know? fuck Jack Horner? How, yeah, how do we make Jack Horner yeah. the absolute definitive main character? Yeah, the top build. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, and it's like, like ah, but he he would be great at oh, it. Oh, he would be perfect. He might be a little too good for it. Yeah, um, yeah. 
he's probably too handsome. Like, I think Brolin, Clooney might be too handsome, too. Brolin yeah. and Rockwell would be good because they're handsome, but not so handsome that it's distracting you from what they're doing. Yeah. Whereas, like, you put Brad Pitt in a sexy role in the 70s, all the girls are just going to be like, I didn't hear a word that motherfucker said. You know what I'm saying? But that could also explain that, like, <laughs> the attraction the you want to be around The allure, yeah. yeah You're yeah. right. Yeah. it could. If we're going that route, way. then I'd rather go with Clooney. Yeah. Just because... Like I said, Brad's going to suck up all the life and energy. Yeah. He's going to suck it all up. Like, yeah. And, and, and whoever plays Dirk would pale in comparison yeah, to Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. like, there's no, I can't even think of a younger guy who could even rival Brad Pitt. Like a guy in his mid 20s or early 30s. Austin Butler, he's already done it once upon a time, but, you know, yeah. Brad Pitt also showed him up in that movie. So it's like, yeah. you want to have it happen twice. <laughs> yeah. Which I do think Austin Butler would be good, Dirk. That's who I. I think that's put. my number one. I he, think he's. I put Austin Butler or Glenn Powell. Glenn from, Powell would be good from but Top see, Gun Glenn Maverick. Glenn Powell's way too confident. Like Glenn Powell, he you need that naivety to the character. Yeah. Glenn Powell is very sure of himself as an actor, a guy, everything. I think originally I said like Tom Holland. Tom Holland and Chalamet. We yeah, talked yeah, about them. we did. They would be good too. They're just so skinny. But I just see, want them to put a little size on through and do it. But like Tom Holland, he would be good at like at least like the, the early, the Dirk. early Dirk, the naive yeah, the, role, the Eddie Adams. Yes, Dirk. and and Chalamet would be good as Dirk. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you could just combine them, yeah. oh, that would be perfect, actually. Yeah. But I think Austin Butler could handle the whole thing. Yeah, he, he's good. He could handle the whole thing. So, Amber, you already know who my pick is for Amber. I only got one, and I only need one. Jessica Chastain. Uh, it's that simple. Yeah. Who else do you even get now? Actually, yeah. Amy Adams? Not sexy enough. No, even though she was great in The Master, She's good. I think you're right. She, she she doesn't have sex appeal like that. Yeah. I don't think she does. Well, she I don't think she could do... She's a little too wholesome. Yes. I yes. think she is, doesn't like, is what that problem would be. Yeah, because like, she's a really good actor, but like when I look at Amy Adams, like she just doesn't get my fire going. When yeah. I look at Jessica Chastain, I'm like, God damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I look at yeah, Amy yeah. Adams, I'm like, love this girl, great actress, but I've never been like, mm, Amy Adams. Like, don't be wrong, she's look good and stuff, but I've never, like, American Hustle, she looks really good, but you look, ain't the, the hottest girl in that movie, is still Jennifer Lawrence. The sequel to Enchanted, uh, that film. That's good. She was uh, in it with Maya Rudolph. Maya Rudolph, yeah. Yeah, Maya yeah. Rudolph, yeah. So what about, uh, uh, you, you said. Maya Rudolph referred her to him. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, what about uh? Oh my God, Jennifer Lawrence! You just said I. I was just once I just said her. I was thinking I was like she, she could play Roller Girl. That's what I was just I was thinking like, she too. Could play Roller Girl. Yeah. Only only thing people she would still probably looks young, she though. still looks young. And but only thing is people would be like well, she's not busty enough. You but, know what I mean? But, but look at um, a fuck. She's so fucking high. But look at uh uh oh my God. Julia Roberts and Aaron Brockovich, they created yeah, they, they something created to make her bust. Yeah, they could do that. Yeah. But, you know, the nude scenes, though. But J-Law has no problems playing nude and fucking no hard feelings. She yeah. has a nude fight scene on a beach. That's You know, which is <laughs> fucking hilarious. Yeah, so, like. But, I mean, she's so, oh, I love, she's just so, I love Jennifer Lawrence. So, like, I would take her no problem. I don't give a fuck how big her titties are. Well, when, uh, when Gal Gadot was first cast as Wonder Woman, like. Oh, she was so like, skinny. And, and, and the comic book community bitched because she didn't have. I mean, Wonder Woman is yeah. sizable. But then you look at her as Wonder Woman and you're like, I can't see anyone else as Wonder Woman. She's incredible. So I think, I think J-Law could really pull it off. Pull it. Especially if she originally played it. She's such a good actress. Yeah. She's going to make you think nobody else can play yeah, this role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't nobody else be Katniss. She made yeah, Katniss, yeah. you know what I mean? So And even when she started when as Mystique. Mystique, nobody else can play Mystique It's now. like, I forgot about uh, Rebecca Romaine. Rebecca Romaine, I totally yeah. forgot. Yeah, I I'm totally like, forgot about She's the that. only one. Yeah, and I'm like, J-Law. Especially in Mystique. Days of Future Past. Oh my God, yeah. She yeah. was... Dude, because I love her in, in First Class, but like you said, Days of Future Past, she like yeah. five is yeah. mistake, yo. And yeah. like, Fastbender is only no other, no one else can play Magneto now. That's yeah. Fastbender, bro. Yeah, like, that's like even fucking Young X, bro. Like James M, he kills that. Yeah, he does. He does kill that. What about Fastbender for uh? For Jack. For Jack, I would like that too, bro. Yeah. Like Fosman. Especially got, after seeing him in the killer. In the killer. Like he's he's got making the a comeback. Yes, he's got the 
he can play a subdued role yeah. real well. He's yeah. done it a lot. Like if you watch Shame, he says a lot without saying a lot in that film. You know what I mean? Like yeah. He's, Oh man, I you know I got no objection. I love Michael Fassbender. He's one of my favorites out. So yeah, he would be good. I like him as Jack. Um, yeah, I like who we got. Reed. Reed was one of the harder ones. I said Pete Davidson. I do like Pete Davidson yeah. for it. For, you know, for that kind of goofiness. Goofiness, especially in a modern day porn setting. He yeah. actually would work really well. Yeah, because women are attracted to that like heroin chic thing right yeah, now. He's yeah, yeah. And he looks like he does drugs all day. Yeah. So like that would, and he's like. He is goofy and stupid like reading. Yeah, so that, yeah. that would work. Actually, I'm not even going to argue with that. So I probably can't come up with anyone better. Um, Scotty? Scotty, I, I was thinking Jay, uh, Jay Cooper Hoffman. Yeah, just yeah. bring him back. Yeah, yeah. Just bring, him, just bring his son in. Yeah, because who else would be able to capture that same kind of energy than his no, kid. No one. I, and yeah. like he already, and Licorice Pizza. Oh, Scotty J. I said Jay Cooper. It's just Cooper. No, 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 yeah, no. Coop, yeah, <laughs> sorry, because I, I, cause I put Scotty J. No, nah, I knew you, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, like just seeing him in Licorice Pizza alone. Oh, yeah, yeah. He got the job. I'm like, he is yeah. his dad's kid. I'm like, he looks like him. They have a similar acting style. They bring that same kind of energy. Like he was, I'm like, this is your first fucking movie, dude. I'm like, you look like you've been acting for at least five years. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you've yeah, been in yeah. at least four or five big projects. Like, but that he was captured uh, that like young hustler so well. Like he was incredible. But that was that girl's yeah. first film too. Yeah, she it? was yeah. really good. Uh, Elena Ham. Yes, yes. God, they could have got someone better looking though. She was. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> yeah. but, but she it fit. It fit. It, it made yeah. sense with the character. That yeah, made yeah. sense with the character because you're not gonna be convinced. A hot twenty five year old is gonna go for a fifteen year old. Yeah. If a fifteen year old kid's gonna pull an older chick like that, she's not gonna be an older chick that other older people want to be around. Yes. You yes, know what I'm saying? So it yeah. makes sense. Not saying that they didn't want to, but she didn't have twenty five year old guys knocking at her door. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. So like that scene, she's like, You think it's weird I hang out with Gary and all his friends? And the chick's like, Well, no. She's like, I think it's weird to hang out with Gary and all his friends. I'm like, yeah, because it is. You're 25, they're 15. Yeah. You're a girl. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. kinda, girls hang, go up, not down. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and until you get older, you know, once you get, you know, when you get cougar age, then you go down. But at 25, you're trying to fuck a 32, 35. Yeah, girl. yeah. You're not trying to go for a teenager. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Anyway, guys, if you want a licorice pizza episode, we can do that. Yeah, I can talk about that movie all day long too. That's a great film. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a good, great film. Yeah, right. your guy, um, Maestro, is in it. Yeah, yeah. Bradley his Cooper. worst role. No, yeah. not his worst role. But one of his worst movies. <laughs> I do like him in fucking licorice pizza though. He's like, you know, who my girlfriend is. He said Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand. Sand like like the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, such an so asshole. He's ass in that movie, yeah. bro. He's trying to fuck a lot of his shit right in front of Gary. <laughs> but um, all right. So, anybody else that we want to recast? Oh, Buck. We both said Jonathan Majors. We both did, yeah. yeah. Both and Jonathan honestly, Majors. I think he would kill it. He but would kill it. Or Lakeith Stansfield. Keith Stanfield would be incredible. Yeah, he's, a, he's an amazing he's actor. He's a great actor, and he could play that like kind of quiet, like laid back, really well. Jonathan Majors, we have to fuck it. make him like loosen up a little bit yeah. he's so damn big I, I was thinking maybe michael b jordan also too but pretty too pretty yeah too, yeah too handsome. i think i think lakeith stanfield lakeith would be, would be perfect yeah yeah because uh michael b too handsome it would become a michael b show yeah um i think we got all the main players i think so yeah, we yeah. got all the main players um so last last thing three best songs that's tough i um uh... I well, I have three of them together because that that first the party scene, scene, yeah, the scene, like Mama told me not to come, spill yep. the wine, and you mm -hmm. sexy thing, yep. like those three together, they work in tandem so well. It's yeah, insane. and then Boogie Shoes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that scene, ding! that montage, yes, that that's what yeah. I was talking about earlier. Yeah, bro. yeah, he's like montage, you know, it's man. really important. Uh, designer uh <laughs> yeah it's so funny and then sister christian bro come on you know bro you're and, and i guess the other that songs in that scene too that whole yes that's another three songs that work well in tandem in that scene as well 99 red balloons sister christian and jesse's girl um those all work really and, well and god only knows yeah beach boys. Oh, beach, yeah you, know, I, you definitely because of you, I've been definitely listening to more beach boys dude pet sounds is an incredible yeah, album you, you got that whole album, album man you got me on my beach shit. There's a really great uh, 
30th anniversary, so it's from 96. It was like a box set. And they have so many different versions of the songs where different Beach Boys sing. Because I love Sloop John B. Mm -hmm. And some of them are acapella. That's kind of cool. Incredible. Does it have like a doo kind of vibe to it? I'll, uh, I, I, I can find it on YouTube. I'll send you a link yeah. to it just so you can hear it. How you can hear just them harmonizing. It's like mind blowing. It's like they're basically instruments. Yeah, like yeah. Voices are instruments. Because the Beach Boys and Simon and Garfunkel were probably the best male harmonizers. Oh yeah. Oh Simon, and, Simon and Gar, man. They, yeah. Because you know, in the fifties, yeah, you had I all the doo wop groups. Yes. And they were all incredible. I love the doo wop. Yeah, bro. man, dude. The Drifters, mm -hmm. one of the best. Yo, that's what I'm like. Yeah. Uh, Clive oh, McFadden. It's a good song. You yeah. sound from back in the day. Yeah. I wish people still did that. Unfortunately, they don't. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I, I want to talk about music I, all I, day. No, I'm sorry. I would love to hear like four dudes standing on the corner in front of a trash can just, you know, fucking yeah. doing their thing. Yeah. Oh, and, and that's how a lot of those groups started. Yeah, man. Just standing outside. Look, think about like the Coasters, the Drifters, the Flamingos. Mm -hmm. Flamingos are great. Oh. Dude. And yeah. now if, if you would have like Ray Charles or Stevie Wonder sing I Only Have Eyes For You, you wouldn't believe them. No, you would not believe them. But if they sang sunglasses at night, you might believe. You them. would believe. Yeah, that. you would yeah, believe. They do wear. Yeah. Them like okay. Do, 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 okay. Do, do. <laughs> you know, a little piano version. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but... <laughs> That's funny as shit. All right, so my three. Yeah. You got to open the film up right. Best of my love by the emotions. Oh, yes. it Opens the film up perfectly because right. you. You know, you hear the beat kick in, and you see the Boogie Night sign flash. Hell and, yeah. bro, from those two seconds, you know you're about to watch something good. You yeah. know you're about to watch some fire. Yeah. It's, oh, such a good opening scene. And what a perfect song to set the tone, bro. You know what time period you're in. You know it's about to be a good time. Like, it tells you everything you need to know about this film right away. My God, you're right, because that whole scene, not only does it set up all the characters, but even with that song, everyone in that scene who they introduce together they all get the best of their yes, life yes yes yeah yeah and you're right all kind of vibing out to it like yeah like you see roller girl rolling through and she's dancing to it yeah, you know yeah. what i mean and then like amber and jagger sit at the table and amber's kind of you know yeah just and vibing and out smoking dancing. a cigarette yep reading and bucker becky. dancing becky you know what i mean and dirk's walking to the back he's even got a little pep in his step with yeah, the song yeah. on you know what i mean so like Everyone's vibing out. Louise, of course, being a oh, yeah. great host, you know, vibing out. He's yeah, like, you're the you sexiest are, yep, bitch in this bitch place. Is, I mean, she was. She yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, turned Julie, into Robin Thicke, right? Dude, Julianne Moore was insanely hot in that movie, bro. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. She, I mean, she's, she's what, 60 something? She still looks, she looks great for her age. I mean, she's, she's aging. You can see it, but she still looks good. Like, I'm watching May, December. I'm like, listen, bro, if I'm Julianne's more his age, my wife look like that. I'm a happy motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad. Yeah, I'm yeah. not mad. Now, if I'm Jane Fonda's age and my wife look like that, I'm dancing on top of the fucking world, bro. <laughs> like, shit. Shit. Yeah. Dude, let's keep it real. You get a wife like that, who's that youthful, that old, she don't leave you, man. <laughs> Especially if you're an old fart, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. She gonna leave your ass. I'll like, give me a 50-year-old. Um. So, next up, you know, I had to have Sister Christian, my night oh, ranger. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. Sister Christian, know your time <laughs> has come. Motor around. Motor in. <laughs> What's your price for flight? <laughs> Something about 80s vocalists. Yeah. They just, 80s and 90s vocalists just had it. You know, you can just hear the vocals from an 80s song. You well, know were, it's 80s. Well, they were like rock ballads. They were ballad -y, yeah. very ballad -y. And that's, you know. Those power ballads. Yes. Were, yeah. Yes, those power ballads from the 80s. <laughs> Some of them were so good, though, they, man. Like, as, I know you don't like White Snake, good. but White Snake be uh, going hard, bro. But see, White Snake, the reason I don't like him is, one, he named the band after, like, Dirk Diggler's Junk, <laughs> which, which which he thought he had. Yeah, he covered it. Yeah, he definitely did. He's like, so that's why it's called White Snake. That, that's one. But two, he wanted to be Robert Plant. He definitely did. Which, but, wait, but, actually, that might be where White Snake comes it from. Maybe. But, but it's like, bro, you, you ain't never going to be like, the Led Zeppelin, they had their fucking time. And yeah. that time was over by the time you were making music. But in the 90s, he David Coverdale did an album with Jimmy Page, and it was good. It was, was Coverdale Page. kind of cool. But it's like, that. 
you know, it's still not the same. You're never going to be Robert Plant. Never. And you're, even when you're working with Jimmy Page, nope. you know, it's not, it's like the weirdest thing. And that's the, and now they're overplayed. Because when, whenever you hear like older you hear, 80s songs. Here I, you hear, here I go again. Like five times a day. Yeah, easy. And you just want to slit your wrist. I don't know. Yeah, here I go again. Like drifter, I was bold. <laughs> oh, bro, yeah. And I made up my mind. Yeah. I ain't wasting no more time. I ain't wasting no more time. Because <laughs> here I go again. It's, it's almost like he has the runs. <laughs> You know, and that's and he's complaining about it. Here he goes again. <laughs> he can't waste any more time. He's, he's got to like, get to the turlet. Oh. He's like, <laughs> and yes, I said turlet on purpose. The only road I've ever known. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the brown road. Kill Brown, Hilarious, everybody. Kill Brown. Bro. So funny, but yeah, the, yeah. And I love, and of course, Sister Christian, like the '80s songs, just shows you the transitional periods. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, think they, you're right. They they push the story along nicely. And and. When uh, when Dirk and Reed are recording their songs, you can tell. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. The 80s. You got the touch, <laughs> dee, 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 synths, You know what I mean? Heavy synth. Yes. You got the power. Yeah. You said you're a winner. <laughs> so just the way I'm harmonizing it, you know uh, I'm Im- 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 uh, imitating an '80s song. You know what I'm saying? Just the way I'm harmonizing. You know yeah. What? Gang chants like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, God. very 80s. Oh, yes. so great. Makes me want to watch another good 80s based Mark Wahlberg movie, Rockstar. I've with never Jennifer- seen it. Bro. Is that about the guy Bro, that um, that ends up becoming on. the lead singer? For- yes, for. It- I don't know Is if it's supposed, supposed to be Journey. Ba- Maybe I get, you know what that would make sense because I know something because like that happened in real life, but that's yeah. yeah, that would make sense. The band's called Steel Dragon in the, in the oh, okay. movie. They never like. I've never read anything or said anything, big, but that would make sense yeah. based on you know how that went down with yeah, Jimmy. So yeah, yeah, because like sense. a fan ended up becoming ended up a singer. Ended up becoming singer, yeah. yeah so that's, yeah. I mean, I'm guessing. You know, damn, I never fucking made that connection, but I'm guessing that was the influence of that film. But he was in Invincible, also. About oh the yeah, guy who football, became the football playing player. football. Yo, yeah, um, what was his name? Vince. Uh, shit, Vince. Somebody. He's playing way before I was watching, but uh. I don't even want to talk about football right now. No, I'm Fuck sorry. Football, man. I'm so I'm sorry. So sick. I'm sick. Yeah. I'm down to see the fucking Chiefs in the Super Bowl again. Yeah, Kansas City Chefs. Yeah, fuck them. Who are the Chefs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, I'm like, it's, it's going to be them in the 69ers. Right? Yeah, them in yeah. the 69ers. Yeah. So, all right, so I got that song. And like, guys, we'll wrap this up. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, we will wrap this up. So, and I got. Oh, my God, it is about. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. I mean, we, we get in it with this one. It's a lot. Of, it's a bit. It's a long film, a lot to cover. Yeah. So, I got Living Thing by the Electric Light Orchestra. Which I song is I love it? that song. It's, a, it's at the very end. It, it closes the film. Oh, okay. What a terrible thing to lose. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. I'm not, I'm not a great singer. ELO. Yeah, I can't. Did you would just say you're not a great singer, but you were just singing all these songs? Yeah, but that's me being goofy. You yeah, know, yeah I, but I, you I being just, goofy isn't bad, I, not, I can harmonize. Yeah, yeah. That's a little bit better, but... Yeah, that's a, that film closes out the... Or sorry, that song closes out the film when right after Mark... Or, sorry, Dirk gives his comeback speech and shows yeah. you his thing. Yeah. And that song comes on and it's a happy upbeat song, but the song kind of capsulates the whole film in one real quick, you know? So I just thought it was a great way to end it. Ended on a up note, you know, cause he could have ended Boogie Nights so tragic. Yeah, Boogie he, Nights could have had a sad shitty ending, Yeah, but I'm glad he, he took you down. He put your face to the pavement, but then pulled you up, you know? Yeah. Because it, it's after he showed like, where everyone is at that point. Mm-hmm. So you have some happy endings. Mm-hmm. But, well, I, I, I didn't mean that in the way it's sad because we're talking about Boogie Nights, but you know, you, you know what I mean? Like, like we talked about Reed being a magician. Yeah. Uh, only one whose ending really isn't but, good is the Colonel. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Colonel. That's the only one who really doesn't get because, what he ultimately wants. Yeah. Because at the end, like Dirk is back with Jack. Dirk is back with Jack. And Girl. So of course, you know, Jack's happy. You know, Amber's happy to have her baby boy back. Yeah. Roller girl's happy to have her brother back. Yeah. She's she's getting her GED. She's doing her thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sure. So there's life after the industry. Yeah, I'm sure Amber was working on. You know, she's now she's directing. She's yeah. directing oh, Bucks yeah. commercials. Yeah, that's right. So maybe she's trying to get her life on track. Get her son back. That's right. She know? did that documentary mm-hmm. too. Right? Yeah, yeah. She did the doc, and yeah. so, and then you got um, obviously Bucks got a store, kid, wife. Yeah, um, yeah. 
Yeah, he's going to pee in the pool. Yep, he's going to pee in the pool. <laughs> is he going to pee in the pool? <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Uh, you know, hell, I'm sure Louise Guzman, he oh, got yeah. the new, they got the new club, but yeah. the sign's fucked up. Yeah. Supposed to be a goo. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. But he's doing good. And then um, who, only one we're not 100% sure on really is Becky. We know Reed's a magician. Oh, yeah. Jesse's and, with Buck. And and the only reason we're not sure is because probably, you know, he cut that scene you were yeah, talking about. Yeah, so. So he probably cut more. For, for Yeah, so to the average watcher, you think, oh, she went and got married and probably lived ha- happily ever after. Yeah. It might not be that way. But yeah. It does end well for everyone it should end well for. Yeah. You know, all the, everybody in it, it just shows you like, hey, no matter what you go through in life and. What you do, that doesn't have to define you who you are. One thing doesn't need to define you who you are as a character. Yeah. It's just like... And you're not defined by your job. By your job, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. like, God, that's why like, I hate when I meet someone. And the first thing they ask you about yourself is, what do you do for work? And it's like, who cares? That ain't me. Unless unless yeah. you own your own business or you're like superly like some kind of independent artist, entrepreneur or something. You probably don't really care to talk about your job that much outside of that place. You know I, honestly, saying? without revealing too much, you could just say, look, I got soul. Yep. Hell yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it, it does show you you're not defined by your job. Yeah, yeah. One action doesn't define you or one time period of your life doesn't define who you are. Just because you're one way at a certain time doesn't mean you have to be that way yeah, forever. Yeah, we're constantly growing and evolving. Growing and evolving. And I yeah. think that's the ultimate theme of the movie is evolution and growth. You know, personal growth, trials and tribulations. So, yeah, and, huh. and you can get through it when you have a, a support. The right group. people, yep. You got the yeah. right group around you. You get through anything. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. I think, man, guys, if you haven't seen Boogie Nights, well, you basically have now. But <laughs> I think of, we yeah. broke it down for you pretty good. So, give it a letter grade, man. You already know what I'm. Oh, uh, it's got to be honestly an A plus. An a plus. And, and the sad thing is. It gets extra credit every time I watch yeah, it. Yeah, dude. Because I've like, watched man. it how many times the past couple months? Yeah. I'm like, right now it's about 110%. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm so, I, obviously, it's my favorite movie. It's a personal A-plus for me. But I also think, like, taking out my own personal bias, I do think it's a masterpiece film. You know, even if, like, there's films I like or films that I've seen that I may not necessarily love, but I do agree it is a great film. It's a masterpiece. Work. It may yeah. not be my cup of tea particular, but yeah. I can watch it and appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. And I think anyone, even if it's not necessarily your cup of tea, you can be like, you know, I, I get why someone would love this film. Yeah. So, and it's, I think it is a masterclass in filmmaking also. Like, <laughs> like man. not just the acting, but like the camera work, camera work, writing, how, how everything goes, mel- blends together is the best way to say Editing, it. Editing, writing. Yeah. Cause it's edited very well too. Yeah. Like it's not an ounce of fat on a two and a half hour movie. Nothing feels wasted. Yeah, not Everything at all. Everything works. So. so, guys, we're going to wrap this up. So, I think we're probably going to hit you with Goodfellas next. Yes. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I think it's fortunate. It's probably going to be as long as this episode because that's how another that movie they're running about the same runtime as this one. Yeah. So. But there's less characters to cover. So, yeah, that's true. It's more about like. Uh, it's more, yeah, I mean, it's more narrative. It's more narrative based. Sauce. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel bad. Motherfuckers been staring at helicopters and tomato sauce all day. Uh, <laughs> Fucking Ray Liotta, rest in peace. I'm dumb. I'm Jamie. Thank you.